Yeah. I don't know. Today? I actually don't know. Um, I know Are Tim t- kind of t- joked around about giving something away. And then, <laughs> and then uh, that was pretty much it. Because really, um, the artist here got to skip the, um, the application process. Because <laughs> um, a very good friend of mine vouched for him. And I was, uh, <laughs> and I was like, well, let's, let's, we don't really have much planned this weekend. So let's just run with it. Let's do this. If you guys, if you guys do have some stuff to give away, I can set up a giveaway in the discord and do, we can I run do. that. But, oh, oh. Tano. Tano. Actually, I was taking a look at it. your art just a little bit ago. <laughs> And I was and like, well, let's, I was let's, like, we don't really have much planned this weekend. So power, let's just run. Oh, yeah. Isn't she just, she's so amazing. I'm, oh, I'm a big you, fan. Thank you. Uh, I'm here on your time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Hippo I and I go way yeah. back. Uh, yes, we do. Well, way back, as in uh, in crypto years, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, I've known you for seven months, which is actually quite a long time in the NFT world. Yeah, it is. Yeah, true. True that. It's like uh, uh, like seven seven years in in crypto time, right? Yeah, I know. That's why I was kind of like worried yeah. about how I've been like the transition to Japan was because I was gone <laughs> for like a couple of weeks, and it was like, oh man. And I'm still trying to play catch up from all that, which is gnarly. Mm. Yeah, man. You guys should see my little freaking podcast setup. It's it's ridiculous right now. Mm. There's like the kids are over there in their twin beds. Wife's over there in the, the, the I guess it's a full. The dogs are laying on like in the bed and chilling, and the TV's on. It's just not conducive for my feng shui, <laughs> but. It's all good. We're gonna make that happen. All right, I heard a Amen. request. Get you up here. Win minute. Oh, Ken, my boy. Ken's here. Ken. Yeah, he, he could be the Maria. I saw that meme. So yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the drag a queen Dumbledore. <laughs> good morning, people. Is is that Hippolicious? What's Hi. up, friend? What's up? Yes, that's me. How are you guys? Oh, Doing good. good. Man. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. I hate powdery hot fuzz for having these spaces so early in the morning. I've scrolled out of bed five minutes ago, but I love the rest of you. So happy to be here. <laughs> hey, man, I'm about to be going to. I go to zero one every weekend now. Listen, this, it's it's just as rough as me on me as it is you. This was your choice. Okay, this is your show. <laughs> well, it was because now we can have people in Europe on the show. I was trying to think about other people, Ken, when I just when I made that time slot. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. And people in Europe don't <laughs> shill. Do they say shill in Europe? Is that a thing? Do they have homies in Europe? I don't know. They might. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do we have homies? Homies in Europe? <laughs> well, I don't. I, 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 I think so. In, in Is there like another the word United for States homies in Europe? <laughs> oh God. Uh, uh, what do you call your homies? Uh, like they mates? call them waffle. Oh, oh yeah, mates, for sure. Oh, maze. It's pronounced. That's borderline erotic, mate. actually. Home, 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 home. Hip is my home. The, the home. <laughs> El home. Alamo. That's that's already plural. Home. That's right. Yeah. Uh, all right. I am working on the giveaway right now. I'm gonna. Remember. Oh, I can give away uh, a studio NFT. By the way. Boom! There oh, it is. Yeah. We're gonna set this up for I can give two up hours. A, I can give away a season two, which aren't oh. created created yet. I'm sold out. I just sold out. Yay! You did. Woo! You did. That was pretty dope. I wanted it yeah. not to happen until you were on the show, so I could claim it. But then it happened before. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of hoping. <laughs> I was hoping to shill. And then I sold 20, 20 last night. Dude, it's Dude, just like dope. the crypto market, though. It was the hype leading up to the show. That's what did it. Yeah. yeah man. It, it was the tweet. 
for the flyer. That probably got me in the last bit of traffic. Yeah, nice. Tano, uh, <laughs> what is the name of your collection? Um, which one? The photography one or the digital one? The, 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 the one you're going to be AI. giving away. Uh, both of them? From both of them, if, that, if that's all right? If they that, prefer, that is uh, fine. Uh, all right. If they prefer a photograph, then they could check out Street and then some. If they prefer gonna... their AI art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna put it down. I'm gonna. It's gonna be 120. I, minutes. I can write it out for you. Two. No, oh. it's no, it's all good. Two winners, and I'm gonna put art by Tano. Oh, oh. that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> hey, man. You guys have got to remember. I'm kind of. I'm mostly marine, so I gotta keep it simple, mm-hmm. stupid, man. <laughs> I'm, dark, I'm as, trying to... dark aesthetic. Dark aesthetic is yep. the primary collection. Sorry. Okay, we're gonna do. Sorry, can dark. I answer? Can yeah. I answer the giveaway, please? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, I, cool. I actually I started entering them too. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'll, I'm gonna enter. Oh, someone spell aesthetic real quick. A E S T H E T I C. Aesthetic. Oh, you non spell bastard. Sorry. <laughs> I got it. <clears throat> Even though you spelled it out for me, I still messed it up. All right. Dark, dark aesthetic. It shows up on JPEG. It's there. Yeah. All right. Boom. That's one. What was the other one? Street the and first then. one? Street, street and, and then some. some. Street hey, and then some? Yo. Yeah. While you're and doing some, then right, some. While, while you're setting up giveaways, uh, we have some whitelist spots for the fall, and if you want to do something for that, that's up to you, buddy. Your fall. Yeah. I'll do it. I mean, I'm already here, and right. we're kind of doing some banter. That's like the first 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I'm, trying not to, I'm trying to conform to what title wants me to do. And it's oh, really hard. <laughs> That's what title said. Hey yo! <laughs> hey yo! Oh, there we go. We, where's and Maria? The level. <laughs> where's <Everybody>. Maria? <laughs> she, I think she might have been um, knocking it back oh, a little bit last night. So oh. we'll see. Well, let me uh, let me ask some questions based on what I've been getting from data from other people. Like, <laughs> do you guys feel three and a half hours? Is too long, or should it be five hours? I just <laughs> I <don't wanna> know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh man. Well, the funny thing Tough was question. is the only reason why Shilling with the Homies goes long um, is because when it first started, um, it was um, only about an hour, and then it just hour wasn't long enough. And then more people wanted to, to get on, and that's why I started having five guests. It went, like, from three to four to five, and then it just kind of got a little wild there for a bit, and I'm going to have to try to start reining it back in. Um, and uh, so when you have it's been pretty crazy. I guess. Well, it, it was going really well. Um, let me get these people approved. Cart, I, I don't know who you are. No offense, but uh, I do have some guests. If you would like to be on Shilling with the Homies, please go to the Discord and apply. But as soon as I said I don't know who you are, you left. So I guess oh, I yeah. solved that problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's talking to me. <laughs> oh, damn it. He called me out. Uh, um, you promoted a Wildcat to Speaker Wildcat. Are you here? I'm here. I he made is. it. There he is. Woo! There he is. He made it. There's Wildcat Mike. That's that right. guy right there just won a giveaway. Boom. All right, let's see. So season two NFT by Tim. And then how many whitelists did you want to give away, Ken? I don't know. How many you want? I mean, I don't know. It's not my, my project. A hundred? <laughs> well, all right. No, no. I don't know. Let's do uh, one and do five. All right, we could do five. Is this a 10K drop? No. No, actually, it's a revival, which I'm yeah, super stoked a, about. Yeah, it was a, a revival? Oh. Took it over. We, uh, you know, community getting left behind like that. 
Yeah, so the uh, the, it was a it was what a rug, right, Ken? Right. Well, they because you kind of broke up there for a little bit. Oh, my fault. Hold on one sec. Let me get a little closer to the house here. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. All right. Well. Yep. Yeah. So it was a uh, it was a twenty five hundred asset collection. They minted about sixty of them, and then bad mouthed uh, the community in the announcements and took off. So we thought that was, uh, in search of a better term, extremely fucked up. So we took it over, uh, those AMAs and One Mint World, and we are reviving the project with some help from Mullet Lord of NFT Creative and Punk Ass uh, Notoriety. Uh, so we're redoing some of the art. We're, we, we're leaving it with its some of the basics, right? Because if we change everything, then it's not really a revival project, right? We could have just launched a completely different project. So we're adding a few layers. We're probably going to up the collection count a little bit, maybe to 3,500. Uh, we'll probably mint before the end of August, but this is those AMAs, so there will be a lot uh, of utility uh, attached to this. We already have a couple different assets that are going to be going to the holders of this collection and we haven't announced too much of it yet so we're still getting a lot of the utility set in stone but over the next week or two uh all will be revealed if you need it bro you know my defibrillator is ready for you whenever you want thank you i appreciate that and thank you for the beautiful words at the end of the podcast i just finished listening to it today and um, i really appreciate that my wife was um Almost had a little tear in her eye. So, oh, when I yeah, said thank that you. it wasn't a devil, and for her not to hurt me, it was just a small angel with horns. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, that was no. <laughs> that was nice. Oh. She was in no words. But yeah, Wildcat, yeah, she, thanks I, for the uh, the uh, reminded me. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But Wildcat was like, "Hey, man, don't forget my freaking giveaway." And I was like, "You know what? You're right. You're right. <laughs> Can't forget that." But yeah, no. Yesterday we did uh, <laughs> Fungible Devils on on the show, so we had Nate. Uh, come on, and obviously everything's pre-recorded, right? So he said on the podcast that uh, they were expecting and they were going to have a gender reveal, which was really cool. But uh, by the time the show came out, right, we already had the gender reveal in one of our spaces. So I had to tag that on to the end uh, of the show in the outro. But it was definitely a pretty good episode. If you don't mind, I might throw it up top here. And I'm going to take that Ken. as a yes. Yes. That's yeah, totally sorry, funny. I was I was <laughs> muted. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to type. Ken, I've already told you you don't have to ask. <laughs> you could just do like you really. On I, I let you like run half the show last week. <laughs> I still ask. I'm sorry. I can't help it. All right. I'll no, just you're finish. you're my homie. Like really, honestly, the way I look at it, like you and I are like one and the same, except you're more on my show than I am on yours. Oh. <clears throat> That is a good point. But when you call <laughs> yourself out about it, just barely. Upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm kind of bummed because um, it's going to be way more difficult for me to be actually in your guys' Twitter spaces now uh, because the time you guys hold it, it's 07 in the morning, which I'm mustering my junior personnel and making sure everybody showed up to work on time. But I'm going to start trying to jump in right after that when I go out for my coffee break. Because, you know, when you get more senior in the Navy, uh, coffee breaks are um, kind of made more mandatory, I guess you could say. Right. <laughs> I no, just take I them and no one tells me not to. <laughs> right. You need that them. Way. That's right. Like, I actually, I'll... there's not enough caffeine in this world to get me running sometimes. Well, you What's know, up, I Driz? Have to, uh, I've yet to have a get... cup of coffee this morning. It... What's his face? Oh. Nate was telling me to drink Vegemite or Vegemate or some shit. In my coffee. Oh, don't do that, I don't bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh... well, you can't drink Vegemite. Coffee. I mean, I bet you well, can. Put in a protein. Oh, yeah. Shake. Ken said that he puts mayonnaise in his coffee, bro. He puts mayo in there. Oh. So I was like, try oh, some Vegemite. Damn. Damn. Coffee like mayo. Put mayo oh, in their coffee. Awful. Something I do do, though. They have coffee milk. Have you ever had this? It's like a syrup. Like chocolate syrup, but it's coffee. It's actually the state drink of Rhode Island, believe it or not. Uh, it's actually really fucking good. It's like a, a sweetened coffee flavored milk, almost like a chocolate milk. I've got some in my cupboard. I want to send you a photo and see if it's the same stuff that you're talking about. Excellent. That it's sounds called, pretty uh, good, actually. 
Autocrat, I think, is the company that makes it. It looks like motor oil. Very good, though. Wow. Sorry, I just mm. broke something over here. If you guys heard that. I, 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 get have done, I have done bulletproof coffee. That's unsalted butter. Oh. Oh, wow. yeah. I just saw something about putting butter in your coffee. Almost got to yeah. try it. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's... It sounds suspect. It's, it's essentially it, it just suspect. getting more fat to your brain. That's the whole idea, right. is more fat for your brain. Does your brain need fat, though? Oh, your yeah. brain is made, so, made yeah. of fat. Ah, okay. <clears throat> Not going to try, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's I actually mean, pretty good. Black right now, so as, why not? as a somewhat professional slash amateur medical provider... I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure if your blood pressure would appreciate all that butter. Yeah, well. <laughs> Cholesterol, go, you know those things. Go keto. Yeah, that's true too, but I, can, like, I cannot recommend that. Yeah, I can't either. I've been doing the uh, one, di- one day uh, meal thing. I did for two weeks. It was pretty good. I lost a lot of weight, but now I'm kind of cheating. I'm like doing two meals a day, but I don't, I don't eat for until 12 or 16 hours later from wow. the last time I ate. Yeah. It's a bit rough though. It's been, but it's, I've lost a lot of weight. My wife is attracted to my body now, which is great, but yeah. I'm just too bald for her. So I have to wear hats now, which is terrible. <laughs> but, I mean, if you have uh, some like peppered hair, I could shave my head off and then freaking just send you my hair, bro. I, 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 students have been offering, I've been uh, trying to tape bags on there as a gag. My wife, again, did not appreciate either, but Hey, if you can give me a wig, I will wear the powdery hot fuzz on my head and take pictures for you. If you want. That's pretty uh, dope. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm in Japan now. I might be able to get it made for a fairly decent price. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, you're in yeah. Osaka, if you're in Osaka at a wig shop, there's a bar upstairs. Go. Yeah, I'm not, a... quite, I'm not in Osaka. I'm, I'm down okay. in Sasebo. Old Sas Vegas. If you were in a very specific place, I would tell you where a bar is. <laughs> you know, the this is the you, – you would know <laughs> this. So the Navy, you know, whenever you go to a, a location, especially <clears throat> overseas, they blacklist places. Um. In Sasebo, this is the only place I've ever been that has no blacklisted places. Wait, you can it's, go to the red light district? I can go anywhere I want here because there's nowhere that's off limits. Mm. It's pretty crazy. But with all the banter, now we're going to get to the show. So, and now, what's up, fam? The show. It's time for another episode of Shitlin' with the Homies. I'm your host, Powdery Hot Fuzz, the hottest fuzz you know. And hopefully, joined eventually by my lovely co-host, Maria V. But if not, she deserves a break, because that chick works hard. Because not oh, only is she guys, in... Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't wait for her to hear that. <laughs> there she is. There she is. There she is. <laughs> oh, I just want some mayonnaise and banana powdery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. no but she does work hard she um she's actually in the win mint podcast episode uh twitter spaces twice a week as well as chilling with the homies and she gets up at four in the morning almost every day to go work out which is pretty nuts so she deserves a little bit of time off so maria get your rest and i hope we see you shortly but other than that here at Shilling with the Homies, we're all about the Wagami vibe. So if you're not, sorry about your bad luck. You can go to another space. But if you stick around, we might be able to change your mind. Uh, another reminder is, this is not financial advice. So you need to do your own research. We bring you the projects for you to hear and to make your own decisions. This is for entertainment purposes only. So if you haven't already, retweet the space and let's get to it. I'm going to introduce the panel, and we're going to give the panel a little bit of time to speak. Uh, as I call you guys up, I will give you one well, you're already up, but as I introduce you, tell us a little bit about yourselves and your project, and 
Um, don't go like super far into detail because if you do, you're going to end up taking most of my questions. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> but so first up, we're going to have uh, lyrical AI art, which is that's you, Wildcat. Yeah, that's me. Uh, so I'm uh, Wildcat Mac. I'm uh, based in the UK. And uh, actually, it was uh, Fractal Outlook, Tim, who got me interested in AI art in the first place. So everything that I say now is all his fault. Um, mm. And uh, my, my project is uh, using the various, a couple of different AIs to attempt to uh, visualize lyrics from songs. So I take the, the lyrics from various songs and put them into the AI and hope that something interesting and good comes out the other end. That's dope. That's actually really cool. Um, if you don't mind, I, I'd actually... Do you, do you have a website? Um, I do. Um, it's just really a placeholder website. Um, I will... Um, shall I tweet a link to it? Is that the easiest thing to do? Yeah, no that would be great. No, uh, so when you go... F when you tweet, you can go to the tweet, and when you hit the share button, you can share to Powdery Space. Usually I'm on okay. top of it, but I'm, I'm a little lagging right now. Let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, I, I have a website. I've not done much on it. Um, and I have a Discord uh, where I tend to share more. JP, the, my JPG listing site and my JPG listing site is probably the best place to go to look at them. Okay, so awesome. awesome. No, I'm actually really interested in it. Um, I, I love music. Uh, I am an amateur uh, musician myself. And um, I really that one that you wanted me to use for your profile pic, man. I really loved that. That was super dope. Yeah, um, yeah. It's um, that was a commission actually. That one, um, uh, someone from the proxy server um, found out about the project and, and asked me if I, if I could make one from a specific song, and that that's from the song Alfie by the Grateful Dead. Um, and yeah, I really love it. Yeah, it's so cool, man. That's dope. And I, now that you say that, I could kind of see that. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> well, thanks for that, man. I really appreciate that. And uh, next up, we have Miss Tano. And your project was... Um, I have to <laughs> go back to my spot. I'm sorry, unless you want to introduce it yourself. Hello. Uh, sorry, I had to go to the other room because my internet is bonky. But mm. I'm Tano Simon, and my project is about using or is utilizing different AI algorithms, mostly mid journey, to have portraits and other well scenes that I find aesthetic. And my other project is taking photography and making them into. CNFPs, so that's it. And uh, it was Tim, my husband, who got me interested in CNFPs, so that's it. So it's that's all it. Tim. Your art looks really good, and I really like the fact that it highlights different aspects of age, uh, female form, you know, gender, like kind of like, not really gender, I guess, but more of like cultural. Uh, is where I was trying to go with that, and I really, I really do dig your work. It's, it's pretty dope. Oh, she's so good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, her, uh, her, um, collections are called Dark Aesthetic. And, That's it. Uh, street and some, and then some. Street and then some. That's the photo photography one. And I, uh, I am an a will in at least one uh, Dark Aesthetic probably <laughs> because I have so much of her work. Yeah, yeah I actually, but... I might be picking up a piece of her work, too. Um, uh, that's so good. You know, the crazy thing is, ever since I moved to Japan, I've bought some, minted some NFTs, and they've all been, like, Asian, Japanese, and, and origin, <laughs> which has been mm -hmm. weird. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm actually probably going to start collecting some, and you have one of a, uh, a woman in a kimono that I really like that I might yeah. be picking up from you. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. Well, Tano mm -hmm. is kind of, kind of, well, not annoying. I, I wanted to say annoying, but she's really good. Um, that I just keep buying her stuff, and then she keeps making more stuff, and then I want to buy more, 
and uh, it keeps going that way and I'm, I'm getting broke now so uh, <laughs> yeah so it's no she, I, uh, she's well, blowing yeah. up and you're poor now <laughs> it's it's hard to be uh, a sugar mama I, I heard nowadays <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, yesterday that's, that's she came up one. with, yeah, well, yesterday she came up with another great collection and uh, of, of pieces, and I was like, come on, man, I mean, <laughs> I want those too, but I don't have the money now. a break, lady. Yeah, I know, so, well. The modern, I, I might... modern ones? Yeah, man. Those with with the 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 masks on, masks on. Yeah. I mean, the, oh God. Yeah. I want them. Well, yeah. I yeah. Maybe <laughs> I I might I might pick one up. <laughs> Don't tell my husband. <laughs> <laughs> he That's might pick funny. one up. Yeah, I just got kudos for the research I've been doing. So I might have to start doing that. It made me feel good inside. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, Tim, <laughs> Tim was right, by the way. My my husband is just uh, just uh, such a fan as well. So um, yeah, that's true. But I'm I'm more of a fan. Just saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually. <laughs> I'm gonna. That's a that's a question I got for you actually uh, about uh, your husband's now. Um, he's working with you too, but I will um, get to that momentarily. Mm. Yeah. I, it's it's pretty cool. I'm actually I was really stoked about that when I when I saw him in uh in uh Carter Stacks. But I don't want to get there yet. Next we have Return Pointer. And hey. his his art is dope and it was like kind of hard for me to remove the background on it to make it, <laughs> to make your little seat at the bar, but I got you it can. done. Yeah. I got yeah, it. I really appreciate I, it. it turned out really good. Thanks, man. Um I, you really have to magnify in like to two hundred and like sixty percent to get to get it to look clean. So, I know what you're talking about. Been there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your project, man. Yeah. Um, well, I first got into this space uh, just simply as an investor, mainly in Cardano. Um, I found about uh, some NFT projects on Cardano, and up to that point, I hadn't purchased any blockchain NFTs at all. Uh, but shortly after discovering them, I was purchasing Deep Vision and Ada AI NFTs, uh, anything I get my hands on. Really, that's that's how I met Tim uh, and everybody else here. This this, this is a group of uh, friends we've got in here. Um, I've always had a creative itch to scratch, and Cyber Demons was was the start of that. Um, I it started as an artistic experiment, but I was immediately hooked. Um, so. Through the process, I discovered some some really cool art, but I was having even more fun creating it. Um, lately, I've been purchasing a lot of the, the blockchain, on-chain art. Um, it's not really like anything I've done. I've been considering going there, but pretty much everything I've done has been static. I've got three collections now. That's dope. That's real dope, yeah. man. Um have you guys uh, seen any of Gluss's work? Because some of your work actually reminds me of Gluss a little bit. Yeah, I've seen Gluss. Oh, you got me curious. Though. Yeah, he was actually uh, on just last week. <laughs> I'll have to check he's, it out. Yeah, I, I really like his art aesthetic. He's, he's a professional. Yeah, he, he's got some pretty wild stuff, man. It's almost like he ate a bunch of mushrooms and just started drawing. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. But your your artwork is... Is uh, reminiscent of that to me, which I, I really oh, yeah. like it. Yeah, I was uh, really inspired mostly by Bixin. I can never say his name. Bexinski, Zitislaw Bezensky, and also Bosch, yeah. which I got called out on that one earlier. <laughs> nice. Oh, you, you are Bosch. You are doing Bosch. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, so um, the, the first collection was really just portraits. I didn't really have any uh, artist-specific motivation there, really just personal taste. I was I was reaching for something, and I, I got it. Uh, the, the second collection oh, yeah. being more abstract, I was trying to bring something a little brighter to the community because I do tend to gravitate towards darker stuff. So Revelations is, is a bit of a, of a brighter collection of mine. And then Penance, the most recent one, that's the more Bosch-related one. Um, I absolutely love it. It's it's my favorite so far. Um, 
Actually, Revelations and Penance are still minting. The links are up on the website. Nice. If you are oh, uh, while you're while you're on here, if you could tweet it out and share it at the top, man, that would be great. And the people that are in the space can can go check it out. I Absolutely, I'll do that. <laughs> I'm uh, so, yeah, so, the dog's food at the moment, so I gotta <laughs> do what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, do what you can, man. So I I uh, purchased also obviously uh, his work. Um, Thank you, all nice. of them. <laughs> oh, you got a cyber demon. Uh, oh no! I I still need to um, uh, find money for that. Oh, that's fine. It's all it's all about the airdrop. It's just if you want the airdrops, that's when you need to get. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Oh God! Don't talk to me about free art. Yeah, <laughs> I love art um, but too. I I I did I I did mean uh, revelation and uh, penance and penance really does. Uh, um, um, how do you say that? Uh, Vibe gives gives the your uh, boss vibe to me. So, mm. yeah. Is that a, is that a prefer preferable uh, collection of mine to you? Like, do you like that one the most? Uh oh. I, I will say yes. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to feel it uh, out yeah. because I you know I got to come up with a fourth collection and I've been playing with a lot of ideas. I'm trying to read. I, the I, I I I do like I do like it's dark. Hard. Yeah. But the revelation stuff that was I, I also like the cyberpunk feel and neon feel to it. So oh, it's really yeah. hard hard to to um to say which one yeah, which one I really like. I, I think I li <clears throat> really like them as a set, you know, one is bright and and and, and yeah, happy kinda. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to give it some diversity. Really, yeah, I love it. I like it when people explore the dark side a lot because I think like, I I mean not, not that I have a pri problem with br bright and happy but that's I think a lot of times people put on that face and that's what everybody want like you show everybody else your bright and happy side like if I go to your social media account everything's great you're having a, a grand old time but that darker side actually shows the inner workings of that person and their struggles and the things they have to do to get to that bright and, and happy side. So I, I like yeah. the darker side, man. Yeah, that's uh, it really speaks to me. And uh, I, I really, I put a lot of me in it behind the scenes. Um, I think that the next collection is, it's going to be hard to tell what it's going to be. Um, but I'm really trying to bring a little bit something for everybody while still scratching my creative itch. So I just keep putting stuff out there and see what resonates. Oh, man. That's all you can really do, man. I, I appreciate that. Now for our next guest, you guys all know her. She has created this digital AI artist League of Champions. <laughs> Miss Hippolicious. Um, oh! <laughs> I didn't guys, create them, really. <laughs> no, I know. But you put them all together in one little Discord, and that's and you brought me into it. So that's that's oh, yeah. that's the, how the I created DM. that. Yeah, that's I created right. the group DM. Yes, 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 I did. You did, Hi. but um, <laughs> yeah. So those of you that don't know who Hippolicious is, you would be also under a rock if you did not know that. She is the yeah, developer right. for uh, Cardistax, and also the three D developer for Ada Monsters. Um, yes, very, yes. very, very busy lady. And she also works in tandem with her husband on Carta Stacks, which is really cool. And he helps out a lot because there's a lot of times I'm like, I don't know what to do. And he just comes in and does it. <laughs> and I'm like, hell yeah, bro. You're, you're awesome. So uh, give us a little introduction about yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, what do you want to know? Uh, <laughs> I've done this so many times and I still get like, uh, what, what should I tell? Oh yeah, no, well, uh, I'm I'm uh, Hippolicious. Uh, my real name is Karen. Uh, I've been in uh, crypto since t 2017. Um, uh, started my 3D design career really uh, two years ago, just about two years ago, and uh, started in the NFT CNFT business uh, with Ada Realm as a 3D artist, and now uh, st started up uh, Cardistex with. Uh, my friends Ajum Bear and Cold Fusion, and uh, we're creating a Metaverse, uh, a big, huge building with uh, lots of residential rooms and communal areas, 
and uh, a huge uh, collab tower, which will host host loads of uh, uh, projects. And also, there will be a gallery for these 3D artists. 3D artists, I'm saying 3D artists, sorry, uh, AI artists. So they will uh, be able to um, set up shop there and show off their work. I was going to ask that. <laughs> if I would be able to view their artwork um, as I go down in my toga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can. Yes, you can. Okay. There will be a, a gallery and artists can uh, can show their work, show off their work, and uh, you could you know, potentially buy them straight from the gallery. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, man. Powder, your avatar does just have to wear a toga around everywhere now. You know that, right? That's your outfit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if someone wants to design yes. a powdery hot fuzz um, with a toga on, I would be definitely down to, to support that. Oh, he's gonna wear a toga everywhere. Everywhere. That's that's kind of my bag. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that and hey, baby oil. Build... <laughs> baby oil. <laughs> You never know when you're going to need a good bottle of baby oil. You can slide down the hallways. You can wrestle. You could do a lot of things. <laughs> wrestle? <laughs> yeah, I don't ever say a wrestle anymore. I always call it wrestle so I can, <laughs> you know, really get the redneck twang in there. Are you from Illinois? Did you just say wrestle? No, nah, I'm from Florida. <laughs> but oh, yeah, like northern, well. northern Florida, so that's where the accent comes from. Northern Florida is like Southern Illinois. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's a hundred percent true. The more Northern Florida you are, the more Southern you are. Are we gonna yeah. wrestle? I'm gonna all the wrestle way in Saint Pete. Hey, I like Saint Pete though. Oh uh, yeah, I downtown got, is I'm, sweet. I've gotten drunk there multiple times. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but our next guest is Tim and. His project is Fractal Outlook, and <laughs> it's really interesting uh, to go look at. So if you guys haven't checked him out, man, definitely go do so. I'm going to start trying to get you guys pinned up at the top here, some of your tweets. So, okay. Tim, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, so I started with AI art kind of when AI started. Like 2004 ish, but I started in CNFTs just last year, 2021, and then as there's there's like an explosion of algorithms that you can use, Disco Diffusion, Mid Journey, Night Cafe. So I just started making them and loving everything that I saw. So I just started putting that. Hmm. Sounds like you're getting rugged a little bit. Stop I'm going. getting rugged. Rugged by what? Twitter. So Twitter. I don't know how many Twitter spaces you've been in, but sometimes... It tends to be like uh, catch every other word or some of the other stuff. So, oh my, just kinda... my, my sound is bad. Right. Ah, yeah. Hold, hold up. Hey, actually, while he's working on it, I have some really big alpha for everybody uh, in the room here. Uh, if you'd like to hear it, Powder, we had the one and only Hash Lips uh, on the show yesterday, right? Interviewed. Hashlip, you know, with the generative art engine that he built open source, got so many people into the NFT Could space. You hear like me? True OG, right? He's building yeah. a fucking metaverse where anyone, anyone can have the code to build their own metaverse. Completely open source, totally like layman. Oh. It's going to be super cool. It's called Eden Lands. It hasn't even really been announced yet. So this is probably, I'm probably the first content creator talking about it, but Monday's episode is going to totally dig into Eden Lands, all of his NFT projects, the history of the generative art engine that he built, what got him into crypto. Dude, it's going to be such a good episode. You cannot miss 
Peshlips episode on Monday. There is so much fucking alpha in there. It's insane. I'm not yeah, even I'll be lie. honest. I do nothing but interviews, and I was fanboying the whole fucking time. Dude, I started recording the interview without even hitting record. I had to start it over like five minutes later. It was crazy. Yeah, I'll be honest, man. I get kind of depressed when I miss uh, miss the Windmint podcast. I got to catch up, man. Like, I got to do some... I can't wait to get my house and start doing yard work and then just listen to you banter. You don't even have a All great right, voice. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I, I don't think I do. Somebody actually sent me a DM the other day. They said, oh, I love your voice. I'm like, you have terrible, terrible taste. I'm like, if you heard my voice, I hear my voice every day. I hate it. I do not listen to my episodes. After they're edited, I never, ever listen to them. I don't. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I think still... it's just a personal thing, right? Everyone that probably thinks their own voice sounds weird. It always sounds different in your head than it does uh, out in the real world. You know what I mean? I'm still I'm yeah. still waiting for you to read me a storybook because I love your voice. And I've told you a million times, you sound like um, Jim's dad from American Pie. And <laughs> <it's so laughs> awesome. Yeah, you well, should read him the one that um, <laughs> that Samuel L. Jackson wrote, you know, the go to fuck the sleep. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I used to write. I don't know if you know this, Nate, but I used to write uh, kids' books for little, oh. little kids because I would write them for my daughter, right? And, and then somebody said, you should try to get these uh, published. I sent them in and they wanted to publish them, and I never actually went through with it. I probably should and get them published, but uh, I'd be more than happy to write a couple custom stories for your kid, man. That'd be a lot of Aww. fun. That would be amazing. Uh, I don't know why. I, I can't make fun of you doing something do it for my sweet. Daughter all the time. God that's dang that's it. That's don't that's be that's nice. That's I can't make fun right. of you. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that would be incredible, Ken. I'd love that. Especially oh. if it has like a push button that I can push on and it has your voice reading it because I can't read. Like, I can only add numbers. Yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> I mean, you are. Yeah, so write it in ones and zeros and he's got it. Able to read, but it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it, it, I'll write some. Some good devil based stories about his little horns. Amazing. They said, you know, Incredibly those that hard. can't do teach. That is true. And that's it. Yeah, like. that's, that's a cool <laughs> And those thing. that can't teach, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Definitely. Anyway, I apologize. Tim's probably got his stuff all, all set now. I just wanted to give you a little interlude there while he got a. Uh, Got his stuff all put together. Well, I'm just yeah. on phone now. Can you hear me? Nice. Yes, we can. Loud and clear. We boss. That's it. So, as you were saying so, yeah. about yourself. Do I have to start over? No, nah, you don't. That bad? But, no, it wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't really that bad. You were talking about... How there's an explosion of different uh, programs to use, and you started messing with them, and then that's when you started kind of cutting out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I was messing with Night Cafe. I was messing with Disco Diffusion. I was messing with VQ Gone, and then Mid Journey, and Dolly dropped. And those two are so much more powerful and so much faster that we just started having fun with them. It's like, yeah, okay. Like you ask for something and you get what you asked for. It's, they're strong. They're strong algorithms. Disco Diffusion takes like seven to ten hours. And sometimes it fails in the middle. And you have to pay for Google Collab. Mm. It's just like, yeah, here, give it. So we switch. I switched. She didn't switch. She just started using it. She never used Disco Diffusion. 
<clears throat> like, yeah, okay, this is better. Here, take my money. So we're both on a subscription. Like, yeah. So how yeah. long does the uh, mid, mid journey take them? What? How long does it take? Mid journey. Oh, it really? Takes like 60 seconds. Really? And I think oh, nice. On slow mode, I think it takes like 20 minutes or 10. The delay on mid journey is like uh, depending on how many people are using the, the algorithm at the same time. So there's sometimes a bit of delay for it to start. But once it yeah. starts, it's 60 seconds. Damn. It's That's real crazy. fast. Oh, wow. It's, it's really great. fast and really good. And really good. <laughs> exactly. All right. I, I love the art you're making with it, so it's got to be good. <laughs> yeah. Definitely dope. For real. Cause yeah, it's like absolutely. A, I definitely got some questions for you on <clears throat> on some of your inspiration on that for sure. Yeah. And is it is it Sh Shaman 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 Shaman? I saw Shiman. you had your hand hand up. Uh, go ahead. You got the floor. Oh. I know. Oh uh, no no Maybe? no no. Uh, I I pressed the wrong button. I'm sorry. That's why I put my hand down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh no! Okay, no, that's uh, yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. I just no wanted sorry. to make sure I'm I'm letting everybody talk. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No worries. Yeah, no Hip, worries. I need your help. Yeah, there it is. I need your help, Hippolytus. Um, I yes? usually during these spaces, right? I go into car mm -hmm. station and I just run around. They have the racetrack in there now, right? I play around with this thing on the computer, mm -hmm. and I have one of the rover. Oh shit! I just fell into a giant gorge. Well, finally, <laughs> right? I had this rover that you couldn't use in there, and now you can use this moon rover in car station. But I have a little plot too, right? And you're allowed to mm -hmm. put uh, your own virtual assets on the plot. Like I could build something. Right. And, mm -hmm. and as long as it's the right kind of file, get it in here and actually stick it on that plot. So I was going to make some really ostentatious, annoying, giant <laughs> wind mint thing and put it on okay. the moon. But uh, uh -huh. I have no idea. I, I even downloaded Blender. Remember, I told you and I tried. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it was just a square on the screen that kept spinning around. And I just got really upset. And yeah, when it down. Blender is uh, hard. So, uh. yeah, it is, Blender <laughs> is hard. thinking is hard. But yeah, so I may need some help one of these days that maybe make it oh, stuff sure. for, for I'd even, oh, I would even pay you uh, for some lessons in, in how to do some of this oh. uh, 3D rendering stuff. Oh no, you don't have to pay me. I'll do that for you for free. All right, that's for recorded, friend. just so you know. All, right, <laughs> all the lessons I want for free. Perfect. All right, thank you. Yeah, I, I tried to do something in Blender one time and then I just asked Hippo to do it for me. I was like, I'm, I'm going to have a computer wristwatch if this keeps going. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, me. I'm still, I'm, I'm still working on it. Yeah, that's but fine. I mean, it's, almost, it's no it's rush. It's almost done. <laughs> I mean, it's really no rush. The project really, okay. at, at this point, is not really going very far, but I was just mm. kind of hoping maybe with that, I might be able to get them excited again. We'll see. No. But no rush. Definitely no rush. Okay. But, right. Anyways, I want to thank you everybody for your introductions. It was it was actually really good. Um, so now let's get into the questions because really, what I'm we kind of talked about this in our group DM, and the theme I think of the whole show should really be, is it? It's like a artwork versus utility kind of um, talk because. When I first got into NFTs back in December of last year, it was all really about the artwork and people really liking what, what they bought. And now it's kind of switched up to now it's what it was utility or possible utility to passive income to now it's got to have all of that. But yeah. I kind of feel like the art's gotten lost in this. And really, honestly, I've gotten to the point where if I don't like the art, I probably won't even buy it, even if it does have decent passive income. How do you guys feel about that? I mean, personally, I, I think that, you know, I think there's always going to be a place for art, 
in the NFT scene, right? There will always be projects out there where art is the number one utility of that project. And that is why the investors pick it up, right? It's just a really great way. Like we spoke to Danielle Weber. I'm sure you remember on the show, right? Artist to the stars. And she's got this Ethereum project now, uh, but it's a great way for her to get her art out there, right? Even Hashlips was an artist before anything else. He had to go to college and learn everything that he learned about computers just because that was a step his parents told him he had to take in order to become an artist, right? I would say weren't going to let him do it. So there are wow. people out there that, that are artists that love art, but it's really hard, right, to make a living with art, especially after interviewing all of these artists. So uh, I think it'll always be there uh, for people because NFTs truly are the same, at least in my opinion, as a signed piece of artwork, right? What's the difference between a Picasso print on the wall and the actual Picasso, right? The signature. And, and that's that's your metadata, right? That That's the, the entire history of that asset, of that non-fungible token on the blockchain, right? There's only one of them, hence non-fungible token. Uh, so I think it'll always be there for art. But the majority, I think, of people that came into uh, the crypto space and started buying NFTs were doing it for financial gain, right? There are mm -hmm. always folks in here that are using NFTs as investment vehicles, right? And I'm one of them. Right. I love art, right? But when I buy an NFT, I actually have a few like 666 University. Uh, I'm friends with Dead Pop Hell and I like, I love the art he puts out, right? So there's a few out there that I pick up just because of the art. But for me personally, right, I am an investor, not an art collector. So I look for uh, utility because to me nfts are uh an investment vehicle right it, it's a facade yeah. right the picture is literally just your ticket uh to the dance of you know investment with this project right you're handing your money to a team and saying i count on you to keep all your promises and follow your roadmap and make my money make money for me um so yeah. i mean i think there'll always be a place for both you know what i mean i don't think it has to be one or the other hopefully yeah i, and I, I agree no, you did. No, it, it was very truthful. And honestly, like the other day, I wanted to get, um, you know, a Space Pug Alpha because I, I haven't got one and I didn't buy one yet because I didn't really see one that really resonated with me. But then I went on JPG store just, I think it was just the last Chilling with the Homies episode and I saw one with a samurai helmet. And I was like, <laughs> that's the yep, one. That's, it. that's the one I want. You know what I mean? And I finally bought one. So and those were nice. they did a nice job on the camera helmet. They did. They did a really good job on it. And um, just the other day, I think it was actually just yesterday, I minted a Wolves of Rome, and I got one that looks like he's got the garb of the Karate Kid. And I was like, hell yeah, this is cool. I was like, this is right up my alley, bro. So definitely really stoked about that. But I do find myself... Like, I'll go in there, and even though, like, the project has great utility, and in, in, in some way, shape, or form, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and buy it uh, just so I could be in the project. But I always look for, like, the cheapest one I can get. But if I see one that I like, and it really speaks to me, then I'll, pay, I'll spend more to get it. Right. I agree with you. Absolutely. And, and it is always going to be a part of it, right? That art is always a part of it. I, I yeah. was chatting with someone about this in the Discord server today um, because obviously the non-punchable devils has been a resurrection slash revival. And he was just talking about how he doesn't like to buy off JPG because you don't get the thrill of the mint. And I was like, man, when you're looking at a project that is currently got a floor price under the mint, you get access to pick any piece of art you want like you know the utility from being in the discord server you know what we've got coming up um yeah you might not have a one of one or something like that but you can actually go in there and pick like the most beautiful piece that speaks to you and you don't have to worry about any of the other stuff you can literally hand pick like some really cool art because you know the utility yeah yeah, yeah exactly i agree with all that I see uh, Wildcat Mike or Mick has his hand up. I want to hear what he has to say because I got a question for that dude. Oh yeah, I hey, think, I think Wildcat, you don't you don't necessarily you don't have to uh, raise your hand in here. It's, we're, we're all <laughs> we're all equal, 
And if you just want to, mm-hmm. especially if Ken's talking, just step over him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, that's everyone's going to do it right now. Huh? No. Honestly, <laughs> Look at Cold Fusion I, with his I, hand up, like he's being polite and chilling with the homies. You could step well, on Powery too, man. Just start talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the cats from the UK, man. They're polite, bro. They don't. They don't get down like we do. <laughs> well, I did do this shift my work. I, th- I think uh, the thing I wanted to say was I agree with everything that, that, that you guys were kind of saying there. You know, there, there's a, there's an interesting difference, isn't there, in the CNFT world where there's there's some projects that are art. That is that is what they are, and that's what we are. You know, we're we're pieces of art. There isn't there isn't utility beyond the feeling that that piece of art gives you when you buy it and when you look at it in your wallet. That, that that's that's literally what what the utility is. And then there are other projects where um, where it's an investment thing, but there are other utilities as well. You know, there are projects that are long term, slow burner things that are you, you're buying something in the in the in the hope that maybe in two or three years it pays off. And I was just kind of reflecting a little bit that we're only eighteen months, less than eighteen months into the whole NFT thing on Cardano, and we're still early. You know, there there will be a lot of AI art on on Cardano eventually. And there, there already is quite a lot of people doing that, it, you know. It, but, but we're, we're less than eighteen months into that. We'll, we'll be some of those at the earliest projects, some of the earliest pieces of art that, that have used these mediums to to create NFTs on Cardano, and that's a pretty exciting thing for me to think about. To think that you know, Tim and and Return uh, Return Pointer and Tim and and, and Tano and I are we're, we're doing something that's kind of pretty cool and pretty new and pretty funky um mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like it when you're doing it because you're tearing your hair out going ai will you just sort this bit out but um, ad- actually we're, we're pretty new in this space and it's a new space and we're pretty new in it so it's pretty cool yeah no i dude what you guys are doing is is crazy awesome like really it is because i'm probably going to end up trying to get pieces from all of you guys so when i actually because I'm going to have a crazy room and then I'm going to have a room where I want to display all my art. Um, and if I build out my room like the Roman palace I want it to be, I'll definitely be hanging your piece. Sure. Yeah, man. Uh, so I already minted two Cyber Demons, the Revelations one. They're both pretty damn cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I saw somebody just purchased a Cyber yeah, Demon cyber too. I, I still yeah, got a I tweet got, about that. I got two. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't tell my husband. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Pictures or it didn't happen. Listen, I got a question for Wildcat. Like, do you take uh, do you take requests? Because I know some songs that would be badass. So, um, yeah, my my aim when I started this because I was kind of like a a pretty um, it's a bit of a hobby for me. So my aim was to to kind of hit 50, a mint 50, which I've done, and I've put them up for sale on JPG. But the policy's open until the beginning of December, so I've decided that I'm not going to, I'm not necessarily going to make any more kind of off the top of my head, but I am open for commissions. So if, if anyone is interested in, in a, it has a song that really means something to them. I've done a couple recently, one one for the, the, that's become the the kind of the the icon for the the project, and what I did one for Hippolytus, and actually doing that would meant a lot more to me because it was it was about getting to know the person and and what the song meant to them, and trying to find something from the AI that that kind of fitted both with the song and with what the person was trying to get out of it. So I'm I, that that kind of for the next four months while the policy's open, I'm happy to do commissions. So just get in touch. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, I'll send you a message. I got I got a couple ideas. Oh, cool. Yeah. Dude, Driz has got ideas for days, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't even keep up with them. Up here. Yeah, I sometimes I'm in the, the chats. I'll go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm going to look for um, my tweet. I tweeted it out, the, the commission uh, I got from, or, or the, the com- commission piece I got from. Uh, uh, that one was Cat. amazing. It, it uh, came out really it's, well. it's it's gorgeous. So I'll I'll uh, pin it off top. You you guys gotta see it. It's gorgeous. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, actually, if you guys want to um, enter, uh, I'm gonna be doing a contest. I know I've been saying it for weeks now, but one day I'll get my act together um, for someone to create a shilling with the homies 
um, like emblem, almost like wind mint, but I want mine to be somewhat different because every time I did mine on Carvana, <laughs> it ended up like wind mints, and I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> it's a derivative, uh, derivative project. Hey, I just want you to know that I just went to mint uh, one of these. Uh, where the hell am I? The uh, <laughs> penance collection. Uh, Schiller with the homies this, this, Twitter space. Right. This, this penance collection, right? And when I went into NFT oh, yeah. Maker, you know how it pops up the pictures that you have to click on? Like, click on all the bridges, and it's super fucking annoying all the time. This yeah, one told me yeah, to click on all of the elephants made out of clouds. How the yeah, fuck dude. is an elephant <laughs> I made the out same of clouds? Wow. Meant because of these goddamn elephants, but I did. Uh, I'm oh, no. No, I got it. I got it right. First, I, I just I just posted uh, ADA addresses for the first time ever in Twitter, maybe about 15 minutes ago now. So if you don't want to use the payment gateway, you can use the address. I'm just apprehensive to use the addresses because NFT Maker Pro tells me that they expire after a week. So I usually don't like uh, sharing them. <laughs> well, anyone that goes into NFT Maker, right, you can always choose send manually, right? That's usually what I do. I yeah. just pick send manually, yeah. it gives you the address, and then you can send it from any wallet. It doesn't have to be connected or anything. So it's anyone that does have issues with this and maybe doesn't know how it works yet, get in there and hit send manual. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I want to see if this thing showed up yet. Let's see. Oh, actually, I didn't even send it yet. God damn it. No. I don't knock the ledger. <laughs> I know what that's like, yeah. yeah. Hopefully you're not using Eternal and you have to confirm 20 times. <laughs> I, yeah, I am. Dude, I love Eternal, man. Oh my goodness. Except when such you a good a wallet. contract with a ledger on Eternal, like if you try to do mm -hmm. something on JPEG, it's like this witness, this witness, this witness. Uh -huh. <laughs> you have to hit it like maybe 30 times to get the truth. It's excessive. Wow. <laughs> but, you know, it is uh, safer, so I don't mind. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. It has a good reason. It's not being annoying just to be annoying. Right, like me. <laughs> no. You're actually... <laughs> you're really good at it, though, you know? Gotta do what you're I, good at. I know I bust your chops. You're, you're a freaking really great dude. I mean... Thank you, buddy. I am the grumpiest... I, I'm the most mercurial podcast host you guys will ever meet. I'm either happier than a pig and shit, or happier than powdery in Japan, or I'm just a uh, fucking crank pot. But, oh yeah, you you can get spun up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can definitely get spun up. I, and I haven't, you know, you're probably one of the only people I haven't tried to like to spin up myself. Um, because usually I try to gas people when they start getting spun up, but I don't do that to you, man. Yeah, no, it doesn't turn out well. It's it's not. Now you I can imagine. I actually have. I was yeah, on the it's that room. New Yorker in them. Yeah, I was on the phone with Louie the other day and my daughter, right? We were in the car taking the dog for a hike, and he called, and we were talking about something, and Liv was talking to Louie, and uh, she yelled at me and told me I have to use my anger management workbook. These buttheads got me an anger management workbook. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> nice. general, the time a person with anger management problems can do world, a workbook. <laughs> it's having to sit and do a workbook about why the world pisses me off so much. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, I don't know. What are you going to do? Sounds like he'll just trigger the anger. Exactly. Egg. Exactly. But that's all right. When I get frustrated, I just, they love it because I clean. I, I rage clean. Like I'll clean the house. I'll work in the office. Like I don't actually really get loud and upset. I just fix things. Uh, so it Dude, actually works out pretty well. The family loves it when I'm, when I'm yeah. working hard and upset. Can you rage clean at my place? I could, but it's very far away. It is very, yeah. very far away. So, if you yeah, want to come visit, out there, you know. all you got to do is fly me out there, hit, piss me off real good, and your place will be spotless. Yay! That sounds like a win-win, <laughs> okay. win, you know? I get to meet yeah, one yeah. of my NFT people, and my place is clean. Yeah, right, exactly. Anyway. Right. Wait just need to piss them off. Las Vegas Convention Center, right, for CNFT Con. Somebody says the wrong thing in there, that place is going to be shining. I will be on the ceiling <laughs> cleaning that joint. No, I'm kidding. Oh. Uh, CNFT Con is going to be a lot of fun, though, man. We actually have a meeting in a couple days uh, with uh, with the the you know the powers that be over there at CNFT Con. I don't know if I'm supposed to put their their names out there, but not only for speaking engagements, but for uh, the booth uh, as well. And while I'm in Vegas, we're probably going to get some one mint tattoos, uh, and we're getting a table on the floor in the club. We're nice. going to have a lot of fun stuff. Uh, going on. Liv hey. may come, though. So if my daughter comes, I'm going to have to sit the club out, guys. But you guys are more than welcome. And I think we're going to rent out some big room with a giant table for all of those AMAs 
and fallen investors and all you guys that are our friends there, you know, to sit down and all have a meal together. I think it'll be a good time. You know, speaking of which, is was Louis serious about starting a GoFundMe to bring me from Japan to go there? Because I know he is most of the time, but that was kind of wild because I need to know because if I'm going to do that, I need to put in my my um, what was that? My um, my request for um, being yeah, absolutely doing the interviews and stuff. To do it if you can get the time off, right? Hell yeah, why not? Yeah, dude, I'd definitely do it. I mean, I dude, I I wanted to do that, and when I found out I was coming to Japan, I was freaking bummed, like super bummed. But it's all I gotta do is I I could put in the time. I could definitely do it as long as COVID behaves itself. I should be fine. Hell yeah, it won't. But not, nah, it won't. But we'll see. Oh, you can add my name to that uh, itinerary if you want, like. I'm happy to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be dope. I mean, I, I definitely want to get there. Penance is really fucking cool, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you love it. Yeah, I. Uh, that's my gnarly. favorite collection so far, honestly. <laughs> yeah, there's some dark shit. I like it. It's like, <laughs> I really, yeah, definitely I really like the revelation. That's what I want to hear. It's <laughs> like the uh, lighter side. And it, the, even the Revelations ones, like even though it's a lighter theme, it's still like crazy, They're old. trippy. Yeah, I'll yeah. Like I was going for go abstract and... chaotic. <laughs> chilling with the homies Discord, so you can check it out. Uh, powdery. Don't, don't, uh, don't forget, yeah. the demon gets you free free drops of the uh, of any new project that he does. Wait a yeah. minute, I missed. Yeah, that. and what actually, happened? um, it's. It's not all bad if you get the penance of revelations either. So the cyber demon holders, they get they get an airdrop every time I come out with a new collection uh, prior to the pre-sales. But the revelations and penance, they're they're whitelisted for those pre-sales, and you get a ten aided discount on the following collection if you have a revelation or a penance. The cyber demons always get a ten aided discount. Oh right. damn! And the, oh. And the, the price really yeah. isn't better. I mean, it was only thirty five eight. Right, so we're talking less than twenty dollars. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, oh, if, you, if you bought one and then the other, you should get a ten eight a discount. I think currently, if I'm not mistaken, I, I I temporarily set it up without telling anybody that that if you had one and you bought it again, I think a revelation and you bought another revelation, you should get ten back. Um, I just didn't tell anybody because it was a temporary thing. So if you got right. ten eight it back, you're going to continue to get ten eight <laughs> back. <laughs> All right, I got to check my wallet now because so. <laughs> I did two back to back. Oh, cool. Yeah, it usually gives you um, oh, yeah. a little bit extra as well, like one or two, I think. Or eight back on the second one. Cool. Yeah, that'll that'll nice. happen. Um, yep. All right, where is this thing? All right, it's going in the general chat right now. Cool. See, I always mint in threes, too, so now I'm stuck. Like, I got two, and I have to get another one. It's just a thing I do. It's either one or three. I can't do two. <laughs> Yeah, I usually have to go for even numbers. Uh, the uneven numbers in my wallet drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. That the opposite. Yeah, so, so seriously, uh, OCD people in here. <laughs> Man, it's it's crazy. Everybody's got some kind of method to their minting. Maybe I should get one. Yeah. I'm telling you, number three is always <laughs> magical for me. Like, whenever that third one hits, I'm like, oh, shit, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. I mean, the last time I actually had like a method, I emptied out my wallet, and that's when I was minting Cardistax. Like I'm, I like yeah, used dude. all the eight I had in my wallet. I will say, I think Cardistax is the only mint I've ever done multiple in one. Like I always yeah. mint one at a time, but that one I was like, yeah, here's four fifty. Let's see what we get. <laughs> yeah, Woo-hoo! I, yeah, I definitely did ten. I was like, I'm doing this, and then I was like, man. I did not get my penthouse <laughs> because I didn't what I've noticed with house. with mints, with my I didn't mints. get a penthouse in my one. I got but out of the ten, all of them are adjoining rooms. So I got I got um, two lots of two uh, studios, and then one lot of four studio, and and a pair of deluxes. So I didn't get a penthouse, but I got pretty pretty good pull. Yeah, I, I got a good pool too, penthouse. so I could make two pen, I could make two penthouses out of the stuff that I I minted. So I was I was stoked with that. Um, and then I'll be up there with my lady, 
in the in the upper penthouse. Yes. And you have uh, you're on the farmer's floor. That's good. That's right. I'm gonna have my own casa. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but um, Tim, Tim's got a skeleton key. Yeah, I actually got to join me in my penthouse. I, I always feel like I gotta work hard because they really treat everybody that uh, works for them really good, and. I try even, dude. I was even clearing out tickets when I was flying in to Japan. <laughs> oh. oh man! I was like, I better get on here. And I was actually in the airport in Tokyo, and I was clearing tickets. <laughs> it was during our mint, wasn't it? You were flying during yeah. our mint. Oh wow! I was, I and I couldn't mint. help with the mint, so I was trying to do something. <laughs> oh wow! Hey man, loyalty. It's important. I I want to get mm. everyone around to watch a game of Australian rules football so I can educate you on the beautiful game up in my penthouse one day. My son actually might start playing rugby. Well, that's cool. Believe it or not. Um, yeah, because they actually have that here. and uh, He wants to play something where he can hit people. So I was, I was chatting with Punkast today. Punkast used to play rugby. What about lacrosse? Yeah, I can see Why that. Why does nobody have any love for lacrosse ever? Well, my son played lac- lac- lacrosse back in uh, back in Florida, but they don't have that here. They don't have well. So, see, you could start it. You could be, or he could be, the best lacrosse player in Japan, right? Top of the charts. Uh, this could be very important, right? Talk about a full ride. So, the yeah, we actually talked about we talked about it honestly. So, I got to look into uh, rules for the military and stuff like that, and see what I can do with that, and then. Perhaps maybe look into the Japanese side, but it's kind of weird when you're military and you're in a different country and you're trying to do something in the country that you're in. Uh, right. The rules kind of get a little funky. No, that is true because technically, right, the base you're on is uh, United States soil, right? So yeah, technically, kind of, yeah, and you're still a U.S. citizen, right? So yeah, and we fall underneath that something base. that's called the the status force uh, status of forces agreement, which makes things. Harry, but it is what it is. Yeah. I'll so I'll try to it. figure it out. Yeah, but um, I just figure because you know how here in the states, right, the East Coast is kind of like the haven for uh, lacrosse, right? Especially Northeast, like Long Island and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so when, mm-hmm. but every college in the country pretty much has a big enough college has a lacrosse program. So they have this very yeah. small pool of people from the East Coast. They get free rides all across the country for it. And if Japan had a college or something like that that had a lacrosse program and he's good at it, uh, he could probably get in there, no problem. Yeah, actually, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, where we're, we're originally from, um, the university there, JU, Jacksonville University, was number one in the country for a while, which Hell is yeah, pretty crazy. Awesome. I actually had a yeah, I just wish they were something different. They're, they're the Dolphins. Here. Oh, I bet. Cool. Hey, Cam, oh, how'd you get that Cyber Demons as a NPG or PNG? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, can you ask it in Eternal. I viewed it in Eternal, right-clicked on it, and just hit Save As. Or you can probably go oh. uh, to Pool.pm. If it ever de- saves it as something different, right, like a web page or something else, uh, I'm on a Mac. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're using, but I just go. It's saving it as a JDFIF. I don't know what that is. Well, if you so what it, you can do is you can screenshot it and then yeah, edit yeah, it. Yeah, but I want the real thing. Or oh, you can, I can't help. You the real can, thing uh, is pretty big it in and size. And then just export it, right? I'll go in That's a what file she said. once you open it in the binder. <laughs> and then export it as a JPEG uh, or as a PNG. Right, cool. And it'll make an exact yeah, copy that. of that image. There you go. Oh, Audrey, can you make them... Uh... Speaker again. I think he got disconnected. I'm sorry, James. Oh, sorry. I was like, no, no. You can interrupt whenever you want. Don't apologize. Oh. Like it says, it's downloading as a JPEG, but it's not. It's a different. Just tell Driz to shut up, and then you could talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can mute me too. You can mute me anytime. I won't be offended. Oh. I can mute everybody because I got the power. No, I'm I, just uh, I didn't I really uh, mention it before, uh, but. I had uh, I had upscaled all those uh, quite a bit, which I you know I guess maybe standard for some, but for me, I wanted to make sure they looked good if they were scaled up in the metaverse because uh, I really did intend to display these there. 
So you'll notice that the full size of these are, are, are pretty large. Um, they're usually in the thousands of, of, of uh, pixels easily. So um, <laughs> it's worth considering if you want to display it larger somewhere. Yeah, yeah actually, I've never seen it. It's like a JFIS file, even though it said it was a JPEG. I've never seen that one. It's a JFIS. Mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, it's the bootleg GIF. It's older. <laughs> If I can jump in just for one sec, because I've, I've actually got to bounce, but I do see um, Drewski and Dundrum in the crowd. I was hoping to just yeah. give a shout out and a little plug for the community challenge that we've got as a cross collab. Is that all right? Yeah, go ahead, man. A.TV. I love my boys. Fit or get creative challenge. And I think um, some of the people up here are very creative people, so I'd love to see you get involved. Um, the two options are that we're running, but if you've got a different option for the get creative, you're more than welcome to bring it up. Um, if you want to get fit, we've got a burpee challenge going. Uh, so it's who can do the most burpees in one minute. Um, I hate burpees. Be, uh, I love how he totally says burpees. Fine. He starts low and then, you know, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Nick. Uh, I, don't know, I can't say it. It's just the Australian accent. I can't do it either. I need a uh, Yeah, It's such a anyway, good continue. accent. Right. Um, really then we've um, we got the get creative side as well. <laughs> um, no, keep talking. <laughs> I like it. It soothes me. It's it's nearly my bedtime. I need to hear Ken's voice. I'm gonna like, listen to a podcast when I go to bed. I think. Well, um, the Australian accent's good because you guys sound smart and like really like I don't know eloquent with your speech, and then you get some dumbass like me with a redneck accent. Who's like, hey y'all, let's buy some NFT. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, um, but yeah, the sure. other side of it is the get creative and the idea that the boys came up with Drewski and Dundrum was to see who can come up with the best rap and we haven't um, had anyone throw down a rap yet so it's open to any of you that Ooh. are creative oh. people um, <laughs> wait, wait, I might do that I, mean, wait, I can wait, do what? some rap it's wait, do you be, have uh, actually rap and or can you just write it if you want to write it, just... Ken, I'll, I'll wrap it. No, don't oh, give him yeah. a way out, dude. You gotta wrap it, bro. Wrap it for me, and then we could split it. No, no, I could. you gotta, you gotta write and wrap it. No, goddamn it. Yeah, you no, gotta wrap it. Audrey needs to sing. You're gonna let Audrey needs to sing. I need to um look at rap, trying to do a rap while doing burpees because I want to go for the best of both. Um, but every single person. Oh, wow. Every single person that has a go, you don't have to be the fittest. You don't have to be the most creative. Every single person that participates is going to go in the draw to win themselves a top 666 ranked non-fungible devil as well as an ADA TV. Dude, so cool. I would do almost anything other than burpees. I got burpees the hell out when I was in school for the military. They, they, you ever done uh, the exercise with a deck of cards? Oh, where the deck of cards, oh, yeah. like the number, and they just have a different Eight exercise 15, a allocated? Yeah. yeah, well, one time they were like, yeah, I don't want to do any other exercises, so we'll just do the burpees oh, for man. all of them. <laughs> yeah, I was dead. <laughs> and I, was, uh, I swore to myself, I'll never do another burpee again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are rough, man. Those are definitely rough. But no, that's, that's dope, man. I definitely... I'd, I'd be down for the creative part. I have to think of something. I actually <clears> like <throat> doing stuff off the cuff, like when, um, you know, Crime Fighter and them get up in here in stocks and they kick a beat. I like that. That's that's a good that's a good time. But you got a, have you got something off the cuff for us right now? Throw, throw something down. Can you wrap? Oh that no! Up? So usually, no. I, and I did when I was younger, but when Stocks was in here, he would kick a beat, and then I would get on here and start rapping about stuff. I gotta really feel it. I heard that Hippolytus is actually really good at beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Hippo, I will try to learn that song for you. Um, yes, please. It once break once my hard. guitar gets here, um, <laughs> I, will, I will do that. Break me hard? No, don't learn that. Uh, have an awesome day slash night wherever you are in the world, guys. I gotta go. So thank right. you very much for having me up. Later, All right, everybody. Later. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, later. But I mean, we really went off on a crazy tangent. 
<laughs> we did. It's all time. We'll kind of, yeah. kind of can bring it back down, back, back round again to, to songs and uh, byproducts if you want, powdering. <laughs> yeah, you definitely could do that. Um, do not make me any art to the tune of Achy Breaky Heart. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. No. Dude, uh, we should have yeah, a Wildcat well, make an Achy Breaky Heart AI. I Hell could do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be dedicated to power. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, that's so bad. No, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's so like bad. That, it's good. Let's do that it. That song should have died in the nineties. <laughs> I wish, I wish his heart would have actually broke because then we, that song would have never finished. <laughs> so what's worse, that or boot scoot and buggy? What do you say? I don't. Know. I mean, that one's actually not that bad. I mean, to be honest with you, but I mean, yeah, it's it's not that bad. But At least I, like, when I did that. when I did listen to country, I listened like to George Strait when I was really young. But I don't listen to that anymore. I guess uh, my my question is: Do you guys kind of know how the whole AI art thing works, and and how the how we use the algorithms? Oh, I have no clue. Anything that's technical, you might as well count me out. <laughs> so um, <laughs> on, on all of these, it's a text. It's a text string that you input. So you, you, um, whatever algorithm it is, whatever um, source you're using, there are various options. But ultimately, you write down a, a text string. You you tell the AI in words what you want it to produce. So you might say a uh, sunny day on the coast of Gran Canaria, and the, and the AI will attempt to produce an image based on the word that you, you or put into it. Or wearing glasses, middle aged male. Yep. Exactly. So they will attempt to produce that. <laughs> It'll do that. Um, and uh, there are various options and things that you can use on, on the, the AI. So you can tell it that you want it to be insanely detailed or you want it to be octane rendered or you want it to use, to look like a Unity render or various other bits and pieces. And one of the interesting things about my project is that I decided very, very early on that I was going to completely restrict it to literally just the lyrics from the songs. So I, I can't, when I'm, when I'm producing the images in, from the AI, I can't tell the AI, I can't guide the AI in any way other than use the lyrics that are in the, in the song. Um, really? So that, that makes it quite challenging for me as in, in terms of this particular project, just to, to kind of... Um, Get get an image out that, that means something. You know, sometimes I'll think, "Oh, this song is really, really cool," and I, I want to make an image based on it. And I put the words in, and you just get garbage out. It's ridiculous. Um, and some of that is the algorithm you're using. So one of my pieces is um, based on message in a bottle, um, and I tried that in a different algorithm, and the the, the, the images that came out were just stupid. They were they were they were non nonsense. And yeah, in a different algorithm, I got really, really good looking image. But some of it's the algorithm and the way it interprets the words. Um, but but also, I can't tell the AI or I can't change the lyrics for, for my project to, um, to make it better, or to, to guide the AI. I'm literally restricted to the, to the lyrics from the songs. So that is a little bit of a fire difference for mine. And it's interesting when you kind of look at the different way that we're using it, you know, um, all of Tim's theme park art, they are, they have that, you know, someone in a steampunk cosplay uniform element to it that makes them kind of unique and special and different and, and, and uh, return, um, return pointers stuff is, is all around an aesthetic and a, and a set of, Images that kind of hang together, and 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 are probably iterations of each other, and yeah, it's challenging to get really good looking images that are consistent across a, a, a suite of, of phrases like that. So it's the, a lot of the challenges in in guiding the AI towards what we want, and 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 some of the discussions that we have as people who use these algorithms is about what 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 techniques we use and, and whether or not really that's art or whether we're effectively just manipulating someone else's art and things like that. So it, it, it's, mm. it's complicated and fun and, and in, you know, I, 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 I would recommend you give it a go if you can, mid-journey particularly or in open beta. So go and, go and stick some random words in and see what you get out. It, it can be quite inspiring. Yeah, well, I, I think... think 
I think it's uh, it, that's an art form, really. I mean, because I mean, even if you are, you know, like you you said, kind of like using someone else's um, lyrics and everything, it's that doesn't really matter because that 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 aspect of the the art that they created, which is music, wasn't really explored, and you're exploring it. So I think it's still a creation. Yeah. For sure. I don't know if y'all have looked on JPEG store and his stuff, but like it's pretty awesome. I really like the Boulevard of Broken Dreams one, man. That one's yeah. super cool. And uh, Hippolyte just picked up on one that's uh, based on the Sound of Silence, and that one came out brilliant. Like, I love that one. So they, 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 some, of, some of them are less coherent, I think is what I'd say. But that, that's the limitation of the project, is you, you, you can't necessarily drive coherently because I'm limited by the lyrics. But um, I think all of them, when you know what the songs that come out really well, I quite like Monster as well, the, uh, the automatic one that, that came out well. Nice. And actually, speaking of art, um, Wolves of Rome just requested to speak, and they have some dope art for their um, scene of oh, yeah, card do. game. Which I finally got onto the onboarding, and I just need to download the game and start playing now. But I did get a Wolves of Rome, and it was like the Karate Kid, and I really was stoked about it. And the, one of the my hey guys and and the uh, go for it, go for it. I was just going to say, just for everybody, you know, one of my favorite things about this project, and I talk to a lot, a lot of projects, right? And when we did Wolves of Rome, they actually put their game out there for people to try even before uh, purchasing their NFTs, right? This is not an access point to the game. So if you like the game, right, obviously having the NFT has huge, huge benefits, but it's just super cool to let people in there, right, to try this and realize that they love it and they want to invest in it without taking that chance, right, with just having to buy the NFT with your fingers crossed that you love the game. And they put a lot of freaking work into this. It's super cool. Anyway, sorry, buddy. Go ahead, my friend. I apologize. Oh, it's just funny. Um, I think that it's, it's weird. there's probably two reasons why some people don't make a game first or put out a game first. One, obviously, they need to the drops allow you to raise the money to start dev on the game. Um, the other one is that it's much easier to rely on someone's imagination to get them pumped for a drop than to like put out an alpha. And I think that that's that's the one thing we're worried about. We we could build an alpha, but we were like, you know, it's not the beta. It's not even the main game. And a lot of these games in the roadmap, what they describe is like amazing triple a and very rarely do you get to see that um and so when you put out something yes you're putting something out but you're also now it's like it's it's tangible so if it's not perfect um you know uh, but but it, t- it turns out the experiment worked in our favor and um, putting out a game first and, and coming with a collection later i think has been well received um we went to mint yesterday and we're 75 percent sold out today so i mean we oh, started yeah. last night at 10 10 p.m and it's 4 p.m now and we're we're almost sold out, which is awesome. And we've got, uh, we've had like a 48 hour party. Um, so all of us are like sick or tired or like losing our voices, mm-hmm. but we're having fun. And yeah, man, thanks for the compliments on the art. I think that's like, you know, we started with art and story. Um, and so I appreciate that, you know, noticing that that's, uh, that's obviously very meaningful to us. Yeah. You really busted my balls last week about not getting an onboarding. So I had to make sure I made time for it. And then uh, really kud- kudos to, to uh lou man because he he hit me up on the dms he was like man are you coming to this onboarding i was like yes god dang it <laughs> i was like dude i'm so topsy-turvy from this move i'm so sorry and i'm still living in a hotel but i i went to the onboarding uh two days ago so i'm officially a tester so i gotta come back here and uh and you know as much as the, as much as i gave you shit last time i gotta give you props this time because for following through and also i'll always give low some props because that dude uh he worked himself to the point where he had like a fever last night so, like he's like hey guys i'm not feeling well i'm gonna dip off the party i was like all right i check in today and he's like yeah i almost went to hospital i'm like wow man you downplayed it <laughs> like, yeah he's a he's a champion man yeah i got to watch him play um with uh excuse me for not remembering his name but one of your other guys on the team and they actually kind of got in yeah nebulous they got they got yeah. into like a back and forth and it was kind of crazy it was it yeah, was cool it gets, to watch it gets, competi- it gets competitive uh, it once i think the thing is we push really hard for people who, who kind of sign up for the game to see it because 
once the bug bites like that game the, the, you know it's got a we've got a super high retention in playing like when people start playing they don't stop playing kind of thing you know so we just gotta we just gotta we, we try to get people to cross the line and take the leap and play and then um and then uh and then yeah the, everything else just works itself out after there <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually going to uh, set it to download as soon as uh, the space is over because if I set it to do it while the space is going, I might get rugged. So I'm going to wait. <laughs> we got rugged last week. I don't want it to happen again. But I'm glad uh, on the success for you, you guys has been so far. I hope that you guys have continued success. You guys definitely deserve it. And I'm kind of glad you jumped in because uh, we have some dope, you know, digital AI artists that are very technical in what they do. And uh, you should check them out, man, definitely, because they got some really dope stuff. And who knows, you may end up hiring one of them to help you make a whole new type of Wolves of Rome character. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at cyber demons right now. Is this one of the AI artists, because yep. this yeah. stuff is, is mad. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that was my first collection. I absolutely loved it. Um, I I I was making them with the intention of hanging them on my wall with one of the nano frames. I just haven't gotten the frame yet. <laughs> Actually, another really fun thing about Wolves of Rome as well. Uh, I don't know if anyone realizes this, but if you do listen, it seems like every project, right, that that comes on uh, any space I'm in, we've usually covered at least right eighty percent of them. But Wolves of Rome does have an episode on when men buy those AMAs. You guys can find it on any major streaming service if you want to see what uh, they are all about. Right, it's a real deep dive into. Uh, the game and how everything works and all the benefits you get from these OG uh, tokens that are, are minting right now. And like you said, right, you're almost 80% sold out. And the best part is that these guys put a lot of work into this, right? They even had a lot of contingency plans for if the mint didn't go well, right, because of the market. But this just goes to show if you put in the work, and you're dedicated and bear market be damned just build regardless right and put in that effort we can still have successful mints right you they don't have the lowest price point in the world because of all the benefits that come along with this right but this isn't a, a 30 ada mint right which is kind of what everybody's doing right now in this market right obviously uh jason with with jelly cubes right had a little bit of a higher price point but you don't see many projects in this market uh shilling that higher price point and being successful with it but it just goes to show that with enough work and dedication and as long as you keep pushing and building a good strong community projects can still mint out right there's still support here yeah. every everyone that's here still loves this space and one ada at the end of the day is one ada so yeah, that's, don't don't that's worry facts. anybody about a bear market this will turn around and just keep fucking building right keep making the space better yeah i gotta I gotta just shout out quickly. Last thing, just because I, I got I can't come into a space now without saying thank you because I'm like overwhelmed with gratitude to our community and the support we've got and the support from spaces and people like Powdery and Winmint and Machinist and I just gotta like throw that out there. Like it's uh it was humbling the night when we went live with Whitelist and it just started flying and I actually got worried that Whitelist was gonna mint out because we didn't limit the purchases because we just we honestly didn't think it, it was like a, any chance of and we did 25 percent of the mint through a 100 person whitelist and that blew our minds and then when we turned it on last night at 10 p.m so i just gotta i just gotta say a huge thank you man like like if anyone is tuning in from our crowd here or if anyone knows us and, and to you guys as well like um, every little bit of exposure or platform if anyone's listening as an artist or a project like reach out to these people man this is community these are the guys that that you know it sounds it sounds like one person here and one person there and this guy's only got 40 people in his stream so it, it maybe it won't make a difference but those things add up and one of those people tells five other people someone mentions it in a stream and then i swear like it, it it just picks up so just it's like i'd like to say it's all our hard work and planning and all that and and, and while i i commend our team for the for the hard work it's 100 percent community powered um and that well, that's got to be the focus oh yeah yeah no that's that's and facts you- and you guys are a very, very community-centric project, right? Through this whole... Uh, the four of us know, are. I'm, 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know I, I've I've interviewed. See, when when people come on, when meant by those AMAs, we dox everybody and everything else. Uh, so I don't like pumping people too much until I get to dig into the project, right? Because uh, a lot of people listen to to what we say, and if I don't have the chance to do the research, uh, but yeah. I can say one hundred percent that these guys I've dug into really deep, right? Wolves of Rome, and they have 100% built a totally community-centric project. Though I'm sure, right, everyone else up here as well, but you guys have to put an application to come on One Mint, right, so we can dig into it and and find out all the awesome things you guys are doing for your communities as well, right? There's no barrier to entry. We don't charge fiat, right? We're we're not one of these YouTubers that charge 300 bucks for a five-minute video that you don't even get to be on uh, to each their own. But uh, yeah, if you head on over to, to our link tree, it's right on our, our profile there. Please, anyone in here, fill out that application, yeah. right? You just have to be a founder of the project, and we'll get you on. And the Shilling with the Homies episode title isn't that. No, it's not. It but what? It, it tends – Shilling with the Homies is kind of – it's fluid, and I – I'm going to be bringing it back to, to the main focus um, uh, here here shortly. So it, it's it's all good, man. No, it's, I'm fine. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just a little weird. Yeah, no, it, it, it happens. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting weird with different projects. Yeah, no, well, it, it's true. It happens. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of friends in the space, right? Our friends Wolves of Rome just had a very successful mint. And I'm sure if you just had a very successful mint and you popped in, we would love to have you up as well, right? To he actually did have a successful mint. You guys are doing, right? Yeah, he so, just sold out. I'm saying if you weren't on the panel, right? True. True statement. But yeah, we like once you're, once you're on the show, um, if you come back in, uh, I generally just go ahead and grant you access to talk. Um, regardless of what's going on, and that's kind of what happens. Shilling with the homies is kind of a gambit uh, at times, but yeah. So, but anyways, to bring the focus back, like I was uh, wanting to do, was uh, actually Tim. My question was going to be for you. Um, so, with your steampunk uh, collection, uh, it looks like the the aspiration was. It looks like mostly celebs. Um, what was the inspiration yeah. for that? Well, I started with walking. Mm-hmm. Weirdly, because I just like him. And I was like, oh, it did a good walking. Okay. Mid Journey can do walking. Can it do Tilda Swinton? And I just kept going. And made a bunch nice. more. Nice. And was that was that the collection that 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 sold out, or was there, or was it an, another one, or no, was it, it season one? That was season one. It sold. I made a hundred, and it sold a hundred. Nice. Cool. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that is definitely dope. Can so, you can you give me mm, Robin Williams? And I got Robin Williams. And it was awesome. And I was like, okay, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. And then so is there is there an end point for you? Or is it you're just going to keep running with it? Yeah, I, that I don't know. I was thinking about doing another 100. And making them either a season two or just putting them in season one, just make another hundred. Yeah. I'm not sure which of those I'm going to do. Yeah. Need more women, though. What's that? We need more women in your uh, your, um, collection, though, Tim. I know. It's it's true. You told me, and my second collection is like 60-40. Yeah. Also, hey, I'll mint some. There it is. Yeah, definitely mint that. It's um, hard. So, so actually, speaking speak about women, I actually wanted to ask Tano, um, how did you um, end up 
picking your subject. Is that something like, because I notice a lot of them, some of the, the facial features are similar, but, but they're not. There's like really, really like subtle differences um, in the actual facial features. And how did that come about? Is that just something that the AI does? Or is that something that you intentionally try to do? Um, okay. Well, uh, just as a disclaimer, I'm into the AI generation. So I try to guide it as they said, as Nick said, as far as Nick said. But in as much as Tim was saying in our group chat that we were curators and not really creators as, as like uh, a sculptor is or a painter is, then some features are going to be repetitive, iterative, because the AI has basis for facial features. Mm. And um, most of them are variations, basically, of a theme that I was trying to make. And maybe that's the limitation of my prompt, the stuff that you put in so that it can generate AI. So... Thank you for, well, for yeah yeah yeah. If you if you don't I don't I don't necessarily uh think it's a, necessarily a limitation. I actually really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You know, because it makes it it, it makes my eye look for that cuz once I kind of because I didn't really even notice that the facial features were similar until I looked at like almost the in collection in its entirety. Mm-hmm. But then I started going back and looking at the other ones and like, "Oh man, what else is different?" It actually kind of drew me in a little bit. More. So oh. I would I wouldn't say it's a limitation. I actually think it's something that I really like. Oh, thank you for that. And oh, uh, just being well, honest. Yeah, thank <laughs> you for that. <laughs> thank you for that stuff. But um, as much as I go for diversity, then there's also some similarities in there, which you pointed out. So uh, it depends on you, I guess, whether you just want to appreciate similarities and stuff like that, and then look at the results. And then see the differences. So that's okay. Also, that's one way to yeah. appreciate art. So thank you for that. Oh yeah, no, I like it because um, I was actually looking. There was a difference between there's there they were similar, but actually the differences were, were like the the aging of it. And I thought it was like really cool. And on JPG store, they were kind of like right next to each other. Yeah. yeah. And I really. And I really got to appreciate like both spectrums, like you know the youthful beauty, and then the beauty also in in aging. Because um, yeah. I think, like for me, it kind of resonated even a little bit further because I think you know the way our society is in general, there's a lot of focus on beauty. But yeah. as a woman ages, she becomes more self conscious about that beauty, not really actually realizing she's still beautiful it's just in a different aspect mm-hmm. so it actually kind of made me appreciate that on on um on multiple levels so okay. man i actually kind of oh. sound like i look at art and different like kind of intelligent right, i was gonna say i didn't want to step yeah on man you sound like you're, you're, you're like, like i don't know cultured or something nice yeah you're like you're, you're an intellectual <laughs> man yeah. tano i gotta i gotta stop that <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think it looks good on you, man. Just talking about art. Yeah. Hey, well, I mean, hey, it, it's that, really Ash. impressive. Thank you. I Thank do. You. Oh, you should have. You should have uh, read the entire transcript of our DM uh, three days ago in our direct messages in our chat. It was. We went to Plato, we went to Aristotle, we went to essences and the thingness of a thing, and then we were just trying to figure out what the hell we were doing. So, um, I appreciate you being an intellectual. So, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. I mean, it doesn't happen often, but, you know, <laughs> when it does, it, it lo- I guess it looks good. <laughs> don't, don't let this guy fool you. He has a southern twang, but he's a smart-ass dude. No, 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 no. I'm just a fuzz. You are <laughs> but the hottest fuzz you know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Fuzz, <laughs> but no, it's I, definitely. I haven't I, seen your fuzz though. No, you haven't. I have. You have want to. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not impressive. Not want to? When you wake up with that fuzz about an inch and a half half from your nose, 
uh, it is very, especially when you went to bed alone the night before. It's, uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. So, Voices um, from experience, I guess. So I'm going to kind of switch gears now. And now this question is for Hippo. And I want you guys all to know that all the questions that I've been asking you guys is I've generated them actually just before the show as I was uh -oh. looking through your stuff and whatever else. And I know, because we've already talked about how you're a busy lady, Miss Hippolytius. Mm. Yep. But I know you do art for fun. I do. Yes? Yeah. Haven't so, had much time for it, but... It's true. Um, I mean, when you rule the world, it's kind of hard to you know, <laughs> do the things you like. But, um... Oh, wow. <laughs> it's not easy being a kid. No, it's not. It's not easy being in charge of a whole metaverse. Right. <laughs> it makes it actually sounds kind of like larger. It's, I mean, it's kind of like it's like a universe, but it's meta. Yeah, yeah the whole world. Mm -hmm. Zero. But blood. um, and hip is the boss. Sorry, she, she is the boss. Screaming in the background in the house. I got to go for a second and find out if something's burning down or something. I'll be back. No All worries. Right. But I want to know when you're gonna put your your love of art out there because we can see because like in Carter Sacks, everything's clean boom mm -hmm. done cool wow i can have a trap door that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and with with wait, wait, monsters, wait. Have a trap door? if if you can think it she can build it and yes i can exactly <laughs> but um I, I i'd like to actually see some of your your actual art, like what you do when you're not creating a world for people to have fun in. And if oh. you ever thought about turning those into NFTs. Oh, uh, well, I've uh, done some work before uh, uh, getting into the, the metaverse business and uh, NFTs. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, if, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's, that's not art. It's just it's just fooling around, really. <laughs> I don't right. see myself as an artist, really. I just love art, and and I, I've studied art, but I'm not an artist in itself. Well, but, like um, so, the reason why I ask that is like mm -hmm. you know you remember I I introduced you and Cold Fusion you know several months back to a motivational speaker Gary V. You remember that? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Have, yeah, have yeah. you ever have you ever seen his NFTs? No. He cre he created NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain, and they're literally stick figures, and people buy them. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's. Yeah, I I see that as a more as a problem than that's a, of a, than of a good thing, really. Um, well, I think the different. Yeah, do you? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I because think if I suck I, at drawing and people will buy it, then that's awesome. Because yeah, it gives me not, faith in myself. Yeah, yeah, okay. But does it not devalue, <laughs> devalue the art uh, already on there? Like the good art. Right, that's why you should put your art out there. You see that trap <laughs> I made you walk into? Oh. <laughs> I, think, I think the moral of this story is that Pottery is about to release a new art line. Yeah. I want yeah. to see this. Yeah, Battery, we're gonna call it fuzzy battery. bumpkins. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and people no. love you. But the reason why I, I want I, I I bring that up is and I knew you were gonna go that route with it, and that's kinda why mm. I, I I had you do You're that. Evil one. You're evil. I, it was it was very evil, but um you you should put your art out there and then show people what actual art's about. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That mm, you bastard. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> oh, maybe, 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 baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, that. I just I think it, I think it would be dope, honestly, and mm -hmm. that's why I started that whole segment right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the line of questioning. It was. Mm -hmm. It, it was. was. See, there's there's and some it thought really behind good. it. Yeah, yeah, you you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're thank you. I appreciate. It. 
You're doing fine. Good. <laughs> well, fine, I could deal with. <laughs> I tell you, you're all right. Yeah, I'm working on it. But, um, so for like Lyrical and, and Wildcat, I was, um, looking through, um, like your Discord and, and website oh, and stuff. Sorry, sorry, Powdery, wait, sorry. Um, can you get Wildcat up? Wildcat up here because he was disconnected for a bit. Yeah, Ooh. there you go. Okay, oh, yeah. There he is. You know what's really funny is I said something about stocks earlier and now he's in here. <laughs> Speak of Satan and he shall arrive. He's going to tell you. So, um, Wildcat and Lyrical AI, so I was checking out your, like, websites and, like, discords and stuff like that and, um, I was wanting to know because I got to see your art and some of the other stuff that was in there, but I was wanting to know: Do you have any like future plans of putting like maybe an about page? Because a lot of times, what I what I really like to do, especially whether it's NFT or if it's art, I really want to know a little bit more about the person that's like producing it. Um, have you guys thought about putting like an about me page out there? I need to figure out how to execute it, but I'm interested. Because I think it's interesting because like when I see when I see your art, obviously I'm attracted to it because I've been saying how dope your guys' art is like for an hour and fifty minutes already. Um but I get more drawn in once I know more about the person because there might be something that you had that influenced you that would strike a chord with me that would actually make me look at your art in a in a different light or maybe in a uh maybe a deeper meaning might be revealed to me through that is that the sort of thing that would be adequate on a discord or do you think it's absolutely imperative that it belongs on the websites too well i um it could be, yeah, you could put it definitely in the Discord, but, like, for, for I would me, be... where your art is, is where I would like to also see that. Yeah, I would do both. I don't have one either. You should do that. But, like, the, just, who is this? And then you have a, whatever, a picture of yourself, and a story of how you came to it and so on. Yeah. Or even like you could do a, like a artistic rendition of yourself. It doesn't even have to be an actual photo because I just recently doxed probably about what I guess hippo about a month ago. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So accidentally. And, yeah. Accidentally. <laughs> but I, I doxed. It happened. Just a, a powdery hot pack with hot fire. That's true. That's true. But, um, so I mean, I get there's some people don't want to necessarily dox and that, and that's fine. Like, I don't have anything against that because I was that way too. But I think maybe an artistic rendition of yourself would be really freaking cool. Yeah, I'm going to brainstorm on how exactly to, to execute that with my website because I've been using it more as a gallery. Uh, mm -hmm. So I didn't add all the extra noise to it, but it does seem uh, very appropriate to put there. I just have to figure out the aesthetic way to, to add it in. <laughs> well, you're an artist, my friend, and I have all the faith in you. <laughs> I try. <laughs> you try really good. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, have you. Have you thought of using an AI to do the website design by iterating like a different versions and then you picking the right one? Hey. I didn't know that was a thing. That's uh, certainly approachable. <laughs> yeah, um, that's been a con it's been a concern for programmers because like now the they're having AI do a lot of the web design. So now web designers have to move into AI themselves. So yeah. I, I, you know, that's always the fun fun thing about this. Dang, that's you have a for that you can share. That's yeah, I'd, I'd have to awesome. double check, but I got a I got a question for the panel related to AI art. And um, so I did. A, I was doing some analysis on the the recent controversy with space buds, and I and I looked at the art. And the first the first piece that they said was copied. I said no, 
that's a style. It's the Kawaii style. It came from like Kawaii Japanese culture. And yeah. I see tons of artists use it. And right. I was looking at yeah, I was looking at all the the, the breakdowns. And so I I think it could go either way. Uh, I don't agree with what they said, like he traced it. That's what one of the official things were said, but like, well, I don't think he did trace it. So my question related to AI is as we go further, and I've been using some of the AI generators, right? When yeah. will this style and originality same argument come from people when you have two AIs that start generating similar work, right? That are they're actually coded and programmed differently and trained by different artists, but have similar uh, aesthetics. What do you think this will the, the AI argument help? No, uh, you can see my algorithm. I generated it through code. And do you think people will go, oh yeah, that's original? Or do you think people will go like, well, wait a minute, you know, will, will there be like a sus related to the future of how like AI generates stylistic versions of art? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. That is a good question. And it's a kind of hard question and it's going to take a decade or more to figure out I think yeah there's going to be a mix of people there's going to be people that are you know taking on the more generous side of saying oh yeah that's original and then you got the other people that are just going to be naysayers no matter what you show them it's going to be the same way with anything else um, I'm, I'm hopeful that the space is going to be diverse enough that it's it's not going to bloom into a real problem but it's hard to say at this early stage it's challenging, isn't it? Because the, what the AIs do is that they, they're trained on a set of images. So if the images that those AIs are trained on are similar to, to a degree, then it's, it's possible that two different algorithm, algorithms could produce the same out, same or similar output with the yeah. same or similar string. And that's, that's where the challenge comes in. There's, there needs to be original creation. There needs to be people who are producing the images the AI is are trained with. Otherwise, ultimately, all the AIs are going to be trained with all the images, and then every AI is going to be the same. Mm. So it, it's, it's a challenge because AI, AI art is not the end of art because in order for AIs to be different new art needs to be created that trains them, whether that's photography, whether that's uh, paintings, whether that's music, whatever it is, that the AIs need to be trained with unique and different things in order to be distinguished from each other. Yeah. That, that's so, interesting because the way you, you bring that up, I think of Pokemon. I know that just popped in with trainers, but, <laughs> but there's this <laughs> idea though, like that's going to be interesting because the, the blender guru so one of the persons I followed, he's been toying with AI and Blender. It's fascinating because that I, I never really thought about that. Like you have this situation where now it's like, who's the best trainer, right? We'll generate yeah. like the best new type of artwork, like 10 years down the line. Like who's going to be the next people to program their AIs to generate really unique stylistic art pieces. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for the ad insight. So yeah, I actually would almost think that you might be able to write a code where it would be able to ensure that that particular algorithm hadn't been done yet. Oh, yeah. The, the, well, the algorithms are going to evolve and get bigger and harder. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's another Pokemon reference. I just said... <laughs> I just realized, like, they'll evolve. <laughs> it's like, hey. my level three art AI, and now it goes against your level two art AI. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this goes back a little bit to right, so the discussion that we, we, we had in our group chat before this all around whether we are artists or whether or not people who create the AI are the artists. And often with, a, with a, something like a mid-journey, that's that's a generalist algorithm, so it's it's trained with a lot of different images, so that or anyone can come to it and produce something that looks good, and it, it's particularly good at what it does. But there are other people out there who are training specific AI algorithms with specific images to produce specific outputs, and those AI AIs will be rubbish at generalist stuff, but they'll be really really good within the AI sort of sort of. Uh, producing images within the sphere that they've been trained with. So it might be cars, 
instance, you know, an AI that's been trained with lots and lots of images of cars will be really good at drawing cars and producing car images. It'd be rubbish at people. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the way I think some of these will go. You know, may, maybe, maybe in the future, a group like ours will become a group that trains an AI with a specific sort of dark aesthetic, cyber demon, penance, cyberpunk, um, sort of steampunk sort of feel to it. Our, our AI might potentially be something that's really good at those sorts of images, but really rubbish at happy clappy, joyous, cartoony stuff. And, and that's where the differences will be. Why are you creating this algorithm? Do you have a specific purpose for it? Are you training it with specific images? And once you've trained it, once you've got an AI, other people could use it to produce images within that, that aesthetic and maybe not outside, not very well outside that aesthetic, whereas something like a mid-journey is a very generalist, trained on a lot of different images, pretty good at faces, as Tano's found out, yeah. amazing images, but, but maybe not so great at some other stuff because it's not had the images to be trained with those that other stuff. But the team that are producing that resource will probably keep training it and keep teaching it so that it becomes a generalist. Anyone can use it for any sort of image. The people who do kind of what we do but are better at it have specialized GANs. They write their own code and it will like correct hands or correct eyes. Mm. They'll run whatever, a thousand iterations to make the picture of a woman and then they'll run a specialized GAN to fix the hands. Just the hands. That's all that's all the AI does. Hands. Correct the that type of thing. And there's people right. who there's people who die in like hours and hours of post processing. There's a lot of uh, background noise uh, from you, Tim. What? There's a lot of background noise. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's all good. I was just we just want to make sure we're hearing you clearly. I can maybe try to switch back to my microphone on my headphones. But that's definitely an interesting point that you guys are are bringing up. I mean, it's I think it's going to be crazy in the future for um, you know AI artists. Definitely, currently bright until you cross the, the bridge that we were just talking about for sure. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of people, a lot. There's. I think Mid Journey has eight hundred thousand people in their server. Wow! So, yeah, so there's definitely going to be a lot more. <laughs> it's it's coming. Yeah, it's definitely coming. But I think you know there's plenty of projects out there, especially I, I mean, even if they're doing one of ones for them to find something that they can really catch their niche into. And to speak to uh, title pending and your previous point uh, powdery about similarities and stuff like that. I think the more basic question is when we talk about differences in originality, how, how do we define originality? If I take a picture of a toilet and turn it into an NFT, am I plagiarizing Duchamp? Did I, did I pronounce that right? Because Duchamp, Michel Duchamp, with the urinal or something like yeah. that. So, yeah, I actually uh, plagiarized some urinals the other day and yeah. <laughs> put it on chilling shill- with the homies Discord because they oh, are ba- really? they're the Japanese bidets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that was a real artist. He did take pictures of toilets. I can't remember yeah. his name, though, but that was his <laughs> point. He, was, he actually made money off of selling toilets and is like, what is art? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there, there is a... Sorry. There was an artist Marcel Deschamps, who made the... There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was the, the, the one who put the urinal in a, in a, in a museum. Yeah. Yeah. 
so it goes so it goes to the deeper question originality, originality and and what is our and when as Wildcat Nick was talking about a while ago uh, more AI is trained more generalized stuff then the more perhaps as title pending was saying a while ago the more similar these AI images will be but then in as much as there is diversity and there is a proliferation of basis of images then I don't know which direction the AI will go. Will it be more diverse? Will it be more similar? So that was a good question, that opening, and I appreciate that question. Yeah, and thanks. You know, I kind of, th- I th- kind of think of it like, you know, people take pictures and they and they use it as art as well. So I would almost think too with the AIs, just like there's so many moments in a day that you can capture. I think that would be the kind of the same way with the AI. I think we're crazy far off from them even coming close unless someone has the similar taste in uh, creating that said art. Then I think there might be a possibility in that. But I, like I said, like if you took a picture every every day for the next three years, there might be things that are similar, but there's there's different things about it. You know, the lighting may be different. The facial expression may be a little bit different. Yeah, they might be sitting in the same position, but it's still a different time with a different feeling and a different motion. That's kind of my outlook on it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, ramblings of a moron. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What you're, yeah, yeah, you're describing photography. Well, right. Is, I was kind of like that... tying it in with like digital AI because whenever it creates something, it's creating something in that moment. Yep. So yeah, it might be yeah. similar, but there's still there's still going to be differences. Is kind of the point that I was making. Yeah. We, we yeah. kind of yeah. talked about this a little bit, didn't we? That you know, there's an element in which. AI art and photography are probably similar. You know, the, the person who's creating the image um, has has the sets the scene and and, and, and notices something really good and, and maybe refines a, a pose or um, sort of background out. That there's a there's a lot of overlap, I think, between photography as art and AI art as as art in, in the way that we we do it. As opposed to the way that the people who created the algorithms do it, right. The way I think about it, we find the images; we don't make them. True. Like <laughs> we look for them, and then if we like them, we save them. But we don't make them. We we just find them in <laughs> in the. In, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I go ahead, see, but... hippo. <laughs> yeah, sounds no. like you disagree. Oh, oh yeah. He, he, Tim likes to downplay his role as a as an artist. <laughs> so I, I just do I do disagree. I think that uh, as it's you uh, putting in the the uh, yeah uh, the prompts and and your your uh, ideas in it, it is your artwork you're uh, creating and it's not the algorithm because algorithm can do this on his own he needs you yeah, that's sort of true but <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean, was saying because it would have never been found without you that's, right. it's <laughs> well it's not going to prompt itself yet it will Maybe yeah, not. yeah, that's an oh. all, a whole other uh, apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> it is. Okay. It is. So, um, another. I have another question for for the panel. So, yeah. I, I as a digital artist, you know, you 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 are a project, but you're not like a part of a a project with an entire team. I mean, I guess there are some out there that are like that, but. A question that, like, if I was someone that was an artist 
in the sh in the listening area that I would want to know is how do I advertise myself? How do I get my art out there? And how how do I start turning it into revenue? Because you know, as a, as a single individual, like even when I started chilling with the homies, chilling with the homies wasn't um, wasn't very big at, at the beginning. But then I started getting a following, and you know, started getting more more people on Twitter and on my Twitter Spaces, as well as you know, in my Instagram and stuff. So, how does a, a digital artist do that? Um, it would be really nice to know. If, if you've said, got any answers, then we, we, we'd really like to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for me, it is. And that's why, actually, you know, for, for projects such as, such as you guys, is really the, the main reason why I started chilling with the homie. No matter how big, no matter how small your project was, I wanted chilling with the homies to be a place for you guys to do advertising and getting your name out there and bringing attention to somebody that may not necessarily have the means to do it because there's a lot of people out there kind of like what Ken from Winman world said earlier that wants to charge you $5,000 to do a YouTube video, but I don't ever want to be that person, whether you have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money. I want to be that guy that could give you a spot for you to talk and tell people why you're freaking dope. <laughs> I think the the longest lasting of us is Return Pointer. He's been around longer than I have. Uh, yeah, but I think I think you've been more successful in your your promoting. So I originally, when I started the Cyber Demons, I to promote. I created a Twitter account and a website, so people had somewhere to go to, as well as a Discord. I think that that was a really good start because it gave people somewhere to go. Uh, and I would post my pre-minted cyber demons in a Twitter post every day until I until I tweeted them all. Uh, once that was done, I kind of went along with uh, you know a slower process that was similar for the for the other ones. Um, but I, I didn't get a whole lot of traction doing that. I tried using um, hashtags. I tried joining like, Twitter spaces. Um, I did pick up some followers along the way, but it, it, it never really blew up, um, and that's okay. I, I'm I'm happy to have these friends around supporting me, and I'm okay with that. Um, but I felt like there was just some big mystery that I still have yet to solve in terms of getting the exposure because I wanted all of us uh, here to be able to just easily help people know about us and see our art, whether or not it like whether or not they liked it was up to them, but. I wanted them to at least see it. And I feel like a lot of us just haven't been seen yet. I think when I comes along, who's been in the space less than two weeks and is selling like hot cake. So I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> how, does, how, does work? How, does, how does this stuff work? You know, some, some people like some stuff, some people, are, for, for whatever reason, it falls into the, it falls into that lap and, and, and it works. And I'm, you know, I, I'm absolutely ecstatic for, for her that it, it works. But at the same time, Tim, Tim's probably been, you know, he kind of said it earlier on, he's been around the space for a long time and yet, only recently has he been able to to create a project that's that's kind of sold out, and I don't I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is about either, either any of these spaces. You know, you guys tonight and today have kind of been talking about cyber demons and how cool some of the penances are. They are really, really cool, and they've been out there for a while, and you know, people have not found them and come across them. So what, what is it that makes the project successful? I don't. It, some of it is what the project is, but I think a lot of it is being in the right space at the right time, behaving in the right way. For whatever reason, at the moment, being on Twitter and, and presenting images of relatively famous people or women in in in, in different poses is the thing that that drives a bit of traction. And that's not a criticism. It's it definitely not a criticism. It's an encouragement. So now you should carry on doing it because it's working and go for it. But why do some projects succeed and some others don't? You know, there, we could probably all name five or six projects in this CNFT space that should have been successful and weren't. And five or six projects that shouldn't have been successful and have sold out and are, are flying. Yep. What, what is it that makes the project successful? 
Well, I have, uh, I think I have three points to my First, I appreciate what Wildcat Nick is saying about timing. Because um, the time that, for instance, I entered was very fortuitous for me because Cardano was hinting some other more dominant forms of art and mine stood out maybe because of the difference from those things. And I also appreciated what Cyber was talking about in terms of wanting to be seen. So I think the basic question was what really drives you to create your art? You want exposure, yes. I would be lying if I would say that we didn't want exposure. We would have been Twitter. But this boils down to what we were discussing in the the uh, Discord, where, for instance, if there's a red flower in the depths of the ocean and it blooms and it's the reddest red ever, is it beautiful if no one sees it? So when Cyber Demon was talking about having his art seen, it's one of the motivators for getting out there, getting more exposure and stuff like that. So timing, I think, and the, the desire to be seen, the desire to be heard or whatever for an artist is also crucial for a project to be successful. No, I agree with that. Uh, sorry, guys, I got rugged there for a second. Um, I really apologize about that. It's like I missed some of the conversation, but no, it's. I, I think getting yourself out there is actually extremely important um, because you, you're you're right. It's that same kind of question, like, you know, if a tree falls in the woods, does anybody hear it? Yeah. And would, there's not really an would, answer to that question, yeah. technically. Well, technically there is. Uh, Tim, being a physics major, would say that. Me, being a philosophy major, would also say that. And it's good that you mentioned that, because Hippo also mentioned that in our group chat. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would, I yeah, would say... I mean, she's actually a philosophy professor, so... She gonna have words about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, yeah. That's right that's that's you for it. <laughs> no, I mean that, you're right because I mean by the way I look at it, regardless, if, I mean if a tree falls in the woods, it's, it doesn't make a sound. No one's gonna necessarily hear it. It just doesn't yep, mean man. that the sound never happened. Um, it it just well, means find it sound. Hurt, right? It'll make a sound, but does anyone hear? Right. It it's just never been observed. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sound is physics. So, yeah, it makes a sound. Well, there it is. Yeah, but right sound, isn't sound something that uh, gets perceived, rather? Well, uh, so, I think it does, but you don't need... This is a deep conversation. Tim, I think Tim. what you're saying is the physics is the airwaves, the vibrations in the air. That's the physics. But sound that is, is a correct. human concept. Yeah. So yeah. sound is a human concept. So it has like, to be like, perceived by a human ear. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's the interpretation of the wavelengths. Right. That's different. That's hearing. <laughs> We're about to go no. on like a three hour rant here if we keep going on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a bad one to go down. I mean, what? No, no, what no. Point meaning? Down. No. Let's save this for a slow day on Shillin. Not that that's ever going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think They're... of it and the difference that Tim put out. The chair is an object. The comfort is a feeling. So the chair is physics, and the comfort is the human element to it. Maybe that might be helpful for us. Yeah. So then is art art if no one pursues it? Is um, art... Is there so art yes, because there's one person that per perceived it initially. Yeah, like you were just saying. Yeah, yeah. I think that comes down to a little bit about maybe why some of us have done these projects. We haven't necessarily done them because 
wanted to be rich and famous. We've done them because we found this cool tool and we wanted to create something with it. And it'd be nice if other people liked it and other people wanted to participate in that. But it's ultimately, for me, finding these images based on these songs has been an exploration and a, and, and a curiosity and a, a bit of fun and a, a something nice to do. Um, and I hope you guys like it, and I hope maybe some of you come and, and want want to, to want me to try and, and your favourite songs out and, and see what I can find. But if you don't, it doesn't really matter to me. It's it's great, and ultimately, as a creator, I want to have fun when I'm creating. And if I have, if I have, I'm having fun creating these images, then then I've achieved something. There's, there's utility, if we go back to the very beginning of this conversation, there's utility in what I created. And if some other people right. like what I created and they want to buy it because they they get some of those feels or they experience something when they see the image, great, that, that's fantastic. But at the end of the day, for me, doing this project has been about expressing myself and about creating something because I like to create it, not because I want to be, not because I want to sell it. Yeah, I agree. And that's, and I look at that, I look at chilling with the homies in the same way. I love doing chilling with the homies. And that's why I do it. And, you know, at the same time, I get to help people. So it's beneficial. Yeah, you just pretty much said all of it, Wildcat. Like, we make these because we like them. Because mm -hmm. you're not having fun, why even do it? Yeah. And it's it's insane because... Well, like two weeks ago... We weren't having fun and we weren't doing this. And now we have paid our rent. We've sold a bunch of stuff. And it's like, okay, we're having fun and making money. And it's like, yeah, don't. Don't do it if you're not having fun. We we dig into the AI because it's fun. It's so fun just to play with. Yeah. And, and having that great Tano's great only had a Tano has had a Cardano wallet for like ten days, and she's minted. I don't know, 200 or something and sold 90. <laughs> wow, wow. It's insane. Yeah, like, she's here, doing really well. I gave her a, I gave her 25 ADA and three block owls. I like to tell this story because it's funny. <laughs> I gave her 25 ADA and three block owls and she sold two block owls inside of two days. So that she could mint more. Like, no, I need to mint more. Like, I don't have enough ADA to mint. I need to mint more. It costs like three, three ADA to mint. No, I gotta mint more. Okay. <laughs> Selling block owls. All right, carry on. And she, yeah, she's gone up, 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 up. Well, we've come to that part in the show where it's the final question for the panel. And the final question is why you? Why should we purchase what what you're creating? And this is your chance to tell us like I said why you? It's, I can't make it any more simple. So whoever wants to go first. It is an evil question. You know that, right? Say again? 
That is an evil. That is an evil question. It is. That's why I wait till the end to ask it. <laughs> uh, especially that way people, to an artist. It, why? Us. Yeah, exactly. All, all yeah. of us love creating the art that we're trying to sell to all of you. I created my first 100 cyber demons for me. So if I like it enough to hold on to it, own it, put it on my wall, I want to share it. I want other people to feel that same way about it. That is the value that I am bringing. The utility in my project is to provide more art or discounts of my art. And for me, that's what it's all about. Being able to be creative, having other people appreciate it so I just don't have too much of my own art. <laughs> so I don't know how everybody else feels, um, but that's certainly how I feel about it. Um, I like to share what I love. Yeah, I love that answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, my, that's, mine. They got me. It's... Essentially, well, I'm I'm just finding things that I like and giving them to you. I'm not allowed to talk about utility for my project. It will. <laughs> Here it comes. No, it's not going to come. I can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway there well it, it, i'm not saying there's not going to be a game there's not going to be a metaverse it's just art and there might be some riddles and puzzles <laughs> and stuff to figure out down the road for my ogs Nice. I don't know what Tano's going to say. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to hear what she's got to say. Oh, oh. damn. Why me? The demons in yeah. the game actually put the bar very high with their answers. I would sound like a real lemon and jerk if I said I'm doing it for the money. But I'm not. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I'm not. I, as I mentioned, I've only been in the space for two weeks. And it was, it was part of that. We had to pay rent. And I thank all of the people who appreciate the art enough to spend aid on it. But at the end of the day, it's like my answer to my own question a while ago regarding that beautiful flower. Uh, Cyber Demons is very noble when he says he wants to share what is beautiful and what is pleasing and what is aesthetic. But me, it's just, well, a way for something beautiful to exist. Even when no one appreciates it, it's just there. I was looking at the project of someone in the space, and it was just sakura blossoms and sakura petals um, flowing, floating down in the wind. And it, it ran for like five seconds. And I just had to thank the the creator of it and I said thank you for making this exist so that's it it's a way of making you exist that's it that's a good answer thank I you. also like that answer that was good <laughs> Eric, are you think... still around yeah, oh, go ahead. yeah. <laughs> I think for me it's about um, you know my, my project is about songs and about um, how they make you feel and f for me you know when you listen to a song when you listen to a song that you like it makes you feel something it makes you feel happy or it cheers you up or it makes you it soothes something inside you or it makes you think or it reminds you of a time and a place when you were happy or sad or or in a different place and and uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to recapture that to a degree in an image um and and I think for some people it's obviously it, it resonated with them when they've seen an image they've gone yeah that that fits that works or that it's a song from a song it's a image from a song that they know and it fits really well with the song and you know why me is is more about the feel for me it's about um it, taking those 
moments the 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 music and the the lyrics and the 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 song makes you feel and trying to capture it in something that you can look at again and again and again and i i hope i hope there are people out there that that appreciate that and want that and, and look for that and and you guys you know are interested in it but at the end of the day what i've done is i've created images that make when i look at them they remind me of those songs they remind me of the things that i i feel and and kind of similar to what return point was saying earlier on about creating art for himself a lot of these songs are songs that have meaning for me and and um i want to share that with you guys um so yeah that's that's kind of the why me for me yeah, that's dope, man. They're all really, actually, really good answers, man. And I, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are even bringing the art actually into the world, because you know, even though I sounded a little cultured earlier, um, I'm not. But with <laughs> you guys doing what you do, it transforms me into a beautiful flower. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> so much cool no. Shit. Yeah. Hello. No. No. It just um uh, it makes me look at look at things differently and I appreciate what you guys do. And if you guys down on the listeners aren't following these people, definitely follow them and, and see what they're going to create cuz that that next piece might be the piece for you. And if you're not following them, then you're going to miss out. And then you, you know miss what? the beauty in your life. Pa- Pottery, I missed out on the whole show. Because somebody did. was somebody was a lazy, sleepy bitch. And well, I made fun it. of you at the beginning. <laughs> Damn it. So you and you did. <laughs> yeah, you shut up. And, and then Ken made fun cultured? of you. Nuh-uh, I did. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I got proof because Karen, Karen's here and, and she's trustworthy. Hi. Uh, see, I missed HIPAA too. This is terrible. Yeah, uh, I missed out on all the good fun. So, do you know sorry. what like an alarm is? I do, and I set two of them. Uh, but well, I wake <laughs> up and I was like, "Oh, I have to piddle." And I look over, and my daughter's sleeping next to me. And I was like, uh, "Oh, she, last night was quite interesting with her. Um, it was a uh, Target with ice for ice cream, and uh, like mood stuff because she's thirteen almost." And mm. the boys, the boys were hiding. That should give you an indication of what fun I was having with my daughter last night. Mm-hmm. She got her period, and she's a bitch. So we all kind of Ooh. just hide. I know we're like, so oh. here's some ice cream. Don't eat us. Don't bite us. Well, yeah, wrong. me and Nate and Ken all of a sudden you got drunk and just didn't wake up. I never get drunk. It was a <laughs> better story. I don't know about it. It was. We can make something up for sure, but I'm so sorry. I it's not like me to sleep in at all. She got drunk off of alarm. bananas and maize. For sure. Dude, no, with, no. With your, Yesterday we were, we were worried about you in your Discord. We were like, is she okay? Like we're liars. Liars. They're like, <laughs> go, go, oh, look. God. go look yeah. at it. I will. Yeah, I actually I will. text you on my uh fake US number app. Really? Ooh. Yeah. With pictures for me to decipher the message? No, no. It's oh. uh I downloaded an app so I can still text people back in the States. Yeah, no, yesterday I ate this massive burrito my brother brought for uh for us at work and it was the size of like a newborn baby. And I wow. made it through That's half huge. of it. Yeah, huge, right? And I make it through half of it. And poor, Louis the pug is in the office, so he's getting everything that's falling off of this burrito. And I became like worthless. I came home and took a two hour nap. It drained nice. me. I've never had that much food in my belly. Yeah, it was like worthless. <laughs> Absolutely worthless. I well, went into a food coma. And I miss Shill and I miss all the artists talk about all this cool shit. This is the show I was actually excited about. And then, of course, Hippa's here. Yep. And I love her. So Aww. she's always a good time. And I miss Now that. you have to go and buy at least one F- NFT from each one of them just to say sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Every single <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> hey, so we're yeah, at okay. I'll say that. Happy to have you back. Ah, uh, I'm sure. I hope to God somebody like starts some good rumors though. Like why I was missing. That should be that should be the quiz for the day. Like where was Waldo? Only where was? Oh, Maria? we just we thought it was 
just being you being drunk because that's very you. <laughs> I d- and I don't drink. All night. I never get drunk. Well, first we no, thought, so... that, but then we thought like maybe we shouldn't make fun of her because she might actually be in trouble. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that no, that no. did occur. I'd be posting that for sure. I'd be like, "Look at this!" No, yeah, there, I no. was sleeping. There's there's like pictures of you with a bottle of tequila. Passed Fuck out. tequila! That shit lies to me all the time. Tells me I can dance and sing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to the worm. Stop talking to the worm. Everyone knows that. I eat. Yeah. Meat. <laughs> no. Oh, you, you <laughs> really? <laughs> so basically, he, he had a food coma, <laughs> and your daughter had puberty. Yes, and I fell asleep terrible. watching Dax. Yeah, it's true. And I was, fell asleep watching Dax Shepard's movie Chips, which I think was good. I mean, I remember laughing and then just passing out. Yeah. I was actually. Tired. Someone says I look like one of the dudes from the original. Uh, the original Chips. Oh, the guy John. Yeah. 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 No, I think I hit. He has better hair. He he does he. Yeah, he has better hair. Dude, sure someone has better hair than you. I mean, your hair is nice. Listen, I don't know. I've never seen him naked, so I'm gonna take your word for it, Drizzle. I've never seen oh. him naked. Either. <laughs> well, I I bra- I prayed. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yeah, that that dreadlocks looks kind of my thing. But does, does, oh, the, does no. the carpet match the top? I need. I guess no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I digress. Man. Yeah. Um, it's it's been a really good show, and I'm I'm really stoked that uh, you guys got to share a little bit of you with us, and hopefully. Um, more people get to share that and they, they invest in you because I think investing in you guys is definitely investing in the future of Cardano. And that's not financial advice. It's just a financial opinion. <laughs> so, yeah. There's thank a difference. You. Thank you. Thank you. But, thank you for having us here. Really appreciate it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So Thanks just so to kind of wrap everything up, like do my little, my little ending is, uh, you know, our mission here is chilling with the homies is to aim and provide a platform for NFT projects to reach a wide array of listeners. We believe that if NFT projects and content creators work together, it will increase the chance of success for the entire space. Stronger together. So I am Powdery Hot Fuzz, the hottest fuzz you know, and our ever late but still lovely Maria V, uh, our co-host. Our developer and resident genius, title pending. And, of course, the people in the Discord. Without you guys, we can't be us. And that goes the same with you guys down there and the listener. We really appreciate everything that you guys do or even putting up with our banter for the last two and a half hours. It's really, really, really appreciated. More, Much more than you ever know. But... As I said before, this is Pottery Hot Fuzz, and you guys have a great rest of your day, and for the rest of you on this side of the world, have a good rest. We'll see you next week. Same time, same space. Bye! Thanks! Bye-bye! Bye! Bye. Bye. Thank you so much! Hey guys. Hi, good morning. I'm so sorry. Dude, don't I gotta wait, wait, I gotta turn oh off everything. God. I'm live. I'm live. I'm live and this is recording live. Why did I answer? Stop. Okay. <laughs> Where is it? Stop. End stream. End stream. Yes. End it. End it. End it. End it. Okay. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that should end it. Oh. <laughs>